Um, I'd like to call to order the Pajaro Valley Unified School District Board meeting for Wednesday, February 12, 2020. Um, item, agenda item 1.2, public comments on closed session. Are there any public comments to closed session items? Seeing none, we will now go into closed session to discuss the following agenda items. 2.1, Certificated Public Employee Appointment, Employee Governance Code Section 54957. Item 2.2, Classified Public Employee Appointment, uh, Employee Appointment, Employee Government Code Section 54957. Item 2.3, Negotiations Update. 2.4, Public Employee Discipline, Dismissal, Release, Leaves. 2.5, Anticipated Litigation, One Case. 2.6, Anticipated Litigation, One Case. 2.7, Real Property, Prop 39, Charter, Counter Offer. 2.8, Approved Settlement Request for Keenan Claim, Number 570600. 2.9 resolution number 19-20-26 possible reassignment or release for certain certificated management thank you good evening everybody good evening um welcome to our board meeting wednesday february 12th 2020 for the Pledge of Allegiance, I would like to ask Trustee Acosta if she could lead the Pledge of Allegiance. All rise, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um. Welcome to our PVUSD board meeting. Uh, I'd just like to say we have translation in Spanish. If you need this, that support, please see Virginia. Is Virginia here this evening? Okay, she, she's in the booth. Um, I would just like to say, I know, I know we have a busy program tonight. I'd just like to say welcome back, everybody, and don't forget to vote. Um, next up, we have Superintendent Dr. Rodriguez, our superintendent, will make a few comments. Well, yesterday, so they'll put up on the screen for you guys. So yesterday, we had the pleasure to recognize two of our employees caught being all in. Um, cabinet first went to Radcliffe to recognize um, Arifa Cheveria, their office manager. And then we went to Hall District to recognize Simona Siqueiros, um, one of our awesome second grade teachers. Um, it's truly one of our favorite events each month. And congratulations um, to them both. So ayer tuvimos el placer de reconocer de dos de nuestros empleados trabajando con ganas todos los días. El gabinete primero fue a la escuela Radcliffe para reconocer a Rifa Chavarria, el gerente de oficina. Luego fuimos a la escuela Hall para reconocer a Simona Siqueiros, una increíble maestra de segundo grado. Es verdaderamente uno de nuestros eventos más favoritos del mes y felicitaciones a los dos. Um, so we started our LCAP meetings last week. Um, we encourage our parents and community to come learn about what is occurring at both the site and district level, as well as give us um, their input. The next meeting, um, we do have a DLAC and DAC meeting, but the next one open to the whole public is Monday, February 24th at Pajaro Middle School, and we hope to see you all there. So empecemos nuestros, um, nuestras reuniones de LCAP la semana pasada. Animamos a nuestros padres y la comunidad a que vengan y reconocen todo lo que está ocurriendo en nuestras escuelas a nivel de distrito, así como dar a su opinión. Nuestra próxima reunión que está abierta a todo la el público será el lunes 24 de febrero en la secundaria de Pajro. So esperamos ver a todos allí. So we're having another Paso a Paso reading challenge starting to, um, Friday, um, February 14th to April 14th. And the students reading the most will win donated Green, um, Green Valley Cinema tickets. Our students have already read over 100 million words 
um, since we started the program. So estamos teniendo otro reto de lectura de paso a paso empezando este viernes 14 de febrero hasta el 14 de abril. Los estudiantes que lean más ganarán boletos donados por el cine de Green Valley. Nuestros estudiantes ya han leído más de 100 millones de palabras desde que empecemos este programa. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, agenda item 3.4. Uh, I also want to mention real quick that we have cards in the back if anybody wanted to speak on an agenda item, each speaker will have two minutes. So starting off with the governing board comments, I would like to ask Tristy Holm if, to speak. Thank you. It's been a busy past few weeks. Um, I attended the Santa Cruz County Civic Summit where students from all over the county, you know, got to meet with tw over, I think, 22 elected officials, you know, in our area. That was remarkable. Also went to the sex ed curriculum review, um, the Santa Cruz County Office of Education strategic plan presentation, the Pajaro Valley Education Foundation, um, we had our, our, our meeting, and uh, the Rio de Mar Science Fair, the Pajaro Valley Chamber Award, Annual Awards Dinner, and the SELPA Community Advisory Committee meeting. Trustee de Serpa. Uh, Trustee Orozco. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us at tonight's meeting. A couple of odd days for me. <clears throat> I am happy to announce that we are in the process of organizing the PVUSD CARES Backpacks for All initiative in partnership with um, a Trusty Home and the Watsonville First United Methodist Church. We're all very excited and we'll provide more details to everyone um, as we finalize the date and time and the time approaches, so we're really excited. We also had our Pajaro Valley Education Foundation meeting. We're making great strides in planning process of our second annual gala, which will be held May 14th, and our Innovator of the Year Awards, which will be in June. Our foundation has applied for its first grant, and if selected as a recipient, funds will be allocated to support our Summer in the City program. In addition, I want to congratulate Erika Padilla and PVPSA team on their grand opening. I got the opportunity to attend their ceremony, which was beautiful, and tour the facility. Thank you for your partnership in providing our students with vital preventive services. About two years ago, I brought up the idea of workforce housing. Given that we're in the process of our dating our facilities master plan, I have asked staff to look into the possibility of incorporating this part, uh, this as part of the plan, and maybe also as part of a future facilities bond measure if we choose to go in that direction. My son and I also got the opportunity to support his preschool, Duncan Holbert, at their Pizza fundraiser. I want to thank everyone who attended their fundraiser. It was a fun event to be at. And lastly, a huge thank you to our counselors for your contributions in support of the success of our students. I also want to acknowledge the concerns you have brought up to my attention from not being recognized at school sites by your administrators to the concerns you have on workload ratios, late grades, among others. I am working with Michelle to explore ways um, on how to reduce the counselor to student ratios. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Trustee Satcher. There, it's on. Thank you. I'll be quick because I know there's a lot of people here today. Um, been busy. I have did a lot of school site visits um, the last couple of weeks. Um, meeting with um, sites and teachers and some students and getting tours and listening to things that the schools need. Um, I'd also like to congratulate all the counselors for the job well done they do. I got to visit the Cesar Chavez Counseling Center this week and the, the team there is so amazing and they do such a great job for all of our students. So thank you for supporting our students the way that you have. Um, I've talked to various teachers over their concerns. Um, we're working on those. We hear you and thank you all for showing up. Thank you very much. Trustee Acosta. I'll waive my comments tonight. Thank, thank you. Um, agenda item 3.5, high school board representatives report. Um, I'd like to invite the schools that are present. I believe Watsonville High, 
What's up, Alhar? Are you here? Is this on? Yes. Hello? Okay, now it's on. Uh, good evening, members of the board, audience. Um, just to start off, where's the clicker on this thing? Oh, I see it. Just to start off, my name is Omar Casillas. I am a senior from Watson High School representing them today. So we, I'd like to begin this presentation by thanking you for the construction that we've been seeing on the cafeteria and the extended communication. We really appreciate it when you guys communicate the progress that's going on or any issues that are coming up because it keeps us in the loop and not questioning everything that's going on. I'd, like, I'd also like to thank you for the heat that we've, got, we've gotten back on our campus. Most of our classrooms are, are with heat and the classrooms that aren't have a heater but are small enough to be heated by, by the small heater. So it's way better than it was a month ago. And then I also want to keep an update on the career and car career pathway uh, rec uh, recruitment days I mentioned last uh, meeting. Freshmen got to explore the career pathways we offer at Watson High, as well as the study services such as the mayor's office, fire department, police department, amongst others. Upperclassmen got to enjoy the day with 60 unique presenters, such as army recruiters, estheticians, cosmetologists, fashion designers, engineers, and other great careers. They got to uh, see uh, four sessions per day, which was very good, and like a lot of them really enjoyed it and got to visit different career options. And also, this week we will be having a vote on the schedule day change. A lot of our students are have been wanting a seven-day uh, period day because uh, a lot all this initiative usually comes from the AVID students that get a period taken away in order to take the AVID class, and they want to get that back, including a seven-period schedule, which uh, has a lot of benefits, but like our blog deals have a lot of benefits, so this uh, week they will be taking a vote on it through their teachers. And the students have put a lot of work into this, as they do every year. Uh, hopefully this year it might pass for them. They surveyed around 800 students and around half the staff, which is really impressive work to do, considering we do have a very large population. and. Change is really hard to make happen, so it's like from a student perspective, like I can see how they are struggling and how they are trying to achieve their goals. Uh, I would also like to invite you to have, have some events coming up this month. February 22nd, we have Donkey Basketball hosted by your Future Farmers of America. They do this every year. It's, it's a really fun event. Everybody enjoys it. We'd also, I'd also like to invite you to Girls Soccer Senior Night, which is tomorrow evening at, at the at Geyser Field. Uh, the varsity team usually starts around 7, and uh, the game before starts around uh, like 5.30ish, they usually go in those ranges. And then the boys' soccer season has been a great season for them. They are first in the section of the league, 11th in the state, and 64th nationwide. Their uh, CCS game is next, uh, not this Saturday, but the, Saturday, uh, the following Saturday. They are very uh, excited for it, and it is actually Coach Hedgepeth, the varsity coach's 50th year with Watson High. Uh, we actually got to uh, give him a plaque during our, our Royal Hearts uh, rally, which was yesterday. And he was really touched by it. A lot of his players have like been influenced by him and do enjoy working with him. So it was an honor getting to see that happen. And then also, uh, Mock Trail is in competition season right now. And we had our first competition last Wednesday and a competition yesterday. Uh, we finished... Our fourth round last night, which is like two uh, rounds for the defense side and two rounds for the prosecution okay. side, uh, we placed a uh, lot in total. Correction, I just got the news like 30 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. we, we're still second place and we're going to semifinals next Tuesday. So, <laughs> it is at the Santa Cruz Courthouse if you guys would like to come and join and see us. I'm on prosecution, so hi. Uh, <laughs> And that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Aptos, Aptos High School here. Is it, is it, okay. Good evening. I'm Oscar. Um, and I'm Marlena. And this is our January, February kind of wrap up. Uh, we are giving a shout out to the choir because at every event, in, uh, this was taken at the Mariner Expo that just happened. They're always there. They're always showing the art that, uh, the performing arts that uh, we have at Aptos High School. And they always just, they sing so nice. It's incredible. 
Um, and recently, both Oscar and I are in ASB, so we've been extremely busy. Um, coming up is Valentine's Day, so kind of to celebrate that, um, we're doing Valentine's Day grams, which we'll pass out to students, which is pretty fun. Um, and then we recently, about two weeks ago, had our winter formal dance, and it went really well. Um, it was super fun, and all the students had a really great time. Um, and then um, Mock Trial competed in the Ethics Bowl at UCSC, and they did really good there. Um, our Mock Trial team is, like, really good. So, yeah. Um, and then... Uh, we also have the Small Point Redeem Day, which is part of the Five Star and PBIS program that is at the schools. And that will be happening the 18th uh, next week. Uh, the Mariner Expo was an event put on for coming in freshmen and also the current uh, Mariners. And we had an event, uh, all the teachers were there, or most of them, and they kind of talked about the classes they have, uh, what they offer, and got to interact with parents and uh, really just get to know the new incoming uh, parents and create that sense of community. Um, and in the athletics area, um, recently all of our um, new sports have started, so swimming, track and field, um, baseball, and softball. And um, uh, this last season, the basketball team did really well, both the girls and the boys. And so, yeah, the new season of sports is running. And last season's is, like, wrapping up and going into their finals, and um, they're all doing really good. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Are there any other schools? A new school? Anybody? Okay. I guess not. Um, next agenda, agenda item 3.6, the LGBTQ plus student conferences and leadership opportunities. This report will be presented by Stuart Rothstein, Director of Queer Youth Task Force of Santa Cruz County, PVOSD staff, and students. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Stuart Rosenstein. I'm the chair of the Queer Youth Task Force of Santa Cruz County. And we've been having the pleasure of working with PVUSD now for many, many, many years. And uh, we want to thank Dr. Rodriguez and the board. Y'all have been doing buses for leadership conferences for nine years now. And it just really shows the commitment from the board. You also have been support supporters and sponsors of the Queer Youth Leadership Awards and just many things that you'll have done. Uh, but I want to give the voice now to the students and the teachers and the parents. But I just want to say my gratitude. I also want to thank the staff. Ava has been amazing. And everyone in transportation, Katie and Felicia, really just go beyond the call of duty, really supporting us and supporting the, the students to make sure everyone is safe and doing the times and figuring it all out. Uh, so thank you to the board, thank you to Dr. Rodriguez, and uh, so now we're gonna have some students kind of thanking y'all personally. Thank you. Um, hi, my name's Providencia, and I go to Lakeview, and I attend a QSA over there. I'm in eighth grade, and uh, I wanted to um, they thank you for the, um, the transportation to the YES conference. Hi, my name is Audrey and I go to Alianza. I'm a seventh grader and I participate in the GSA club. Uh, I wanted to thank you guys for supporting us in our YES conference. Hello, my name is Desi. <coughs> Hello, my name is Desi, and um, I'm in sixth grade at Watsonville Charter School of the Arts. And I wanted to say thank you for providing us with buses to go to the uh, YES conference. So thank you. Hi, my name is Audrina. I'm in sixth grade. I go to Watsonville Charter School of the Arts. I'm in the GSA there. And I just wanted to say thank you for providing us the buses to the YES conference. Um, good evening, my name is Michaela Bacon and I am a part of the LGBTQ plus club at the Paro Valley High School. And I would like to thank you for funding our club and creating a safe environment for us to meet. 
Our club has greatly benefited from you, benefited from you from providing uh, transportation to the conferences and meetings. And you have allowed us to expand and even have our own voice in our community, which we can't thank you enough for that. And the workshops at the conferences has helped out the club on our campus, and we hope that you choose to continue to fund the buses. And thank you for your time and attention. Hi, good evening, everybody. How are you guys? Um, I'm uh, Providence. I'm sorry I lost my voice, so I don't, I can't be quiet, so I can't, I haven't found my voice yet, but I'll find it one day. So I'm a parent of uh, Providencia, and she's, um, she's a part of the QV, QSA. QSA club. And um, as a parent, I just wanted to thank you guys for supporting these kids and for providing the transportation to the conference where uh, my daughter has benefited very much. She's grown as a person and she's very outspoken now and she's an advocate and she's like a leader. So it's really awesome to see her, her growth and to see her become such a leader, you know, and it's very exciting to, to see her um, very involved. So I wanted to personally thank you guys, all of you guys. Have a good evening, bye. <laughs> Hi, my name is Annette Falcon, and my daughter, Audrina, has been in the GSA um, program at Watsonville Charter School of the Arts since fifth grade? Since fifth and sixth grade. And I just want to thank the um, school district for being so open and providing this kind of opportunity to the children who are discovering themselves and allowed the opportunity to be themselves and figure out who they are. Um, because it's hard as a parent to understand and support them when you don't even know who they are and what they are. And just to be able to be there and support them and see them grow and be able to go to the YES um, conference was awesome because I got to see so much growth in each of the children. I got to see all of I got to go on the field trip. So it was really nice to see each of the kids have so much growth in the in that program alone just to see, just to be able to get information that they hadn't had previously and weren't maybe weren't given by their parents or by other support systems and were given by Jen, or who was our GSA leader. And so it's nice to see. It's nice to be a part of it. And thank you for the transportation because I was also on the bus and it was awesome riding back with, I don't know how many kids singing the whole out two hours back. I was like, it was Hamilton. awesome. It was fun. Hamilton. Yeah. Hamilton. That was the number one song. So it was great. It was great to see. It was awesome. Thank you, guys. Excuse me. Hello. Thank you so much for having us here. My name is Jen Salinas Holtz. I work for the technology department, and I am very privileged to also get to be the advisor for four different Gay Straight Alliance and Queer Straight Alliance clubs. Um, three of them are middle school clubs. One of them is an elementary school club, which I'm particularly proud of at Watsonville Charter School of the Arts. And I have had the honor of chaperoning many field trips to LGBTQ and ally youth conferences, including three times at the YES conference in San Francisco, which I'm not sure if you're all aware of what that is, but it's uh, YES stands for Youth Empowerment Summit. And it's an annual conference for middle and high school, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, ally students. Uh, it's a really fantastic event. It's free. So we are so happy that we can invite uh, as many students as we want because we have transportation paid for. It's very meaningful. It makes a big difference in their lives. Um, I just really briefly will tell you the um, the first time I went to one of these conferences was when we had just started a gay straight alliance club at Lakeview Middle School the first year I worked there it became clear that we needed a GSA club uh, we had a student who was f a teacher found him sobbing literally in the closet of her classroom on the floor she asked him what was wrong and he said um, I can't talk to you about it but I'll write you a note so he left the class she read the note the note said, it's so hard to be gay at Lakeview, especially if your family is Christian. 
So that's when we decided to start the club. And um, this student managed to be absent from school every day. We had the club meeting for several weeks, and then finally he came. And we uh, went to a, an LGBTQ and ally youth conference in Scotts Valley that year. And um, he came back and said it was the best day of his life. He came out to everybody right the day after we came back. And it, that alone was a, made a huge difference in his life. So by funding a transportation to these conferences, you all are making a difference in the lives of LGBTQ and ally youth. Um, and I, I can't say enough about what a positive experience these conferences are for kids to just get to be around other students who are like-minded, know that they are not going to hear any homophobic comments from their peers, which is a really big relief. Um, they come back, thank you the parents who have supported their kids and come to these conferences. Several of them have come back and said, I want to present a workshop next time. So um, we had students from Alianza, middle school students from Alianza present a workshop at the YES conference a couple of years ago. So I, I just, I don't want to take up too much time, but I can't say enough about how important this work is, how important it is to support LGBTQ and students and their allies. We have um, most of the students who attend our clubs. Uh, many of them have come out as young as third grade. We have students in third grade at WCSA who identify as LGBTQ. Um, but mo many of them identify as allies, and maybe that means they're just not ready to come out yet, or maybe it means that they just really care about supporting other people. So I also hear from middle school students who say, oh, my parents said I couldn't come to your club anymore because I'm too young, or uh, they don't want me exposed to that stuff. And I, I wonder what parents think we're doing in these clubs. So I will tell you what we do in our Gay Straight Alliance and Queer Straight Alliance clubs we make buttons, we make posters, we talk about supporting other people, we talk about why it's important to be an ally. Tell me, what? We make bracelets, we make crafts, we do all kinds of fun things, and we help educate our peers and our school communities to make things safer and more welcoming for all students. So thank you so much for supporting us, we all appreciate it, and I hope that we will be able to continue to take students to the YES conference. I have eighth grade students who are already really excited to go next year as high schoolers and get to stay later and go to the pizza party. So these, this is a big deal. Thank you all very, very much. Great. Well, do we have any public speakers to this item? No? OK. Um, any questions or comments from the board? Trustee Hall? I want to say thank you for the work that you're doing. You know, when I was a kid, it's like you couldn't be out in school. You couldn't. You couldn't even be out to your friends. And for those of us who were within in, and are within the LGBT com community, it was incredibly isolating and frightening. And that's not something I wanted for my kids, you know, if that was how things went. And it's not it's something I wanted for any kid. And so thank you for providing the connections so that kids can have that kind of connection. They can feel safe. I mean, it saves lives. It does. So thank you. Uh, Trustee Satcher. So, John, I want to thank you. I know you do a lot of work, and I've had the opportunity to talk to you every once in a while. Um, and I think that this is important for our community and for our children. There's a high rate of suicide among teens in the LBGT community. So I think having clubs like this gives them a safe place to feel normal and to be without judgment. And I have a friend in high school who committed suicide because they had no support. So this touches my heart and my heart goes out to all of you. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Um. I also just wanted to say thank you to the task force of Santa Cruz County. I also like to say thank you to my friend Providence and my classmate from Watsonville High School, Annette Falcone, um, for letting your children find out who they are. Uh, as Annette said, um, we don't we, we don't know either. You know, when I was in high school, um, you know, I, I noticed friends that were just always quiet and didn't want to say anything and. Uh, 
um, I was, you know, they were really good people, but just, you know, I, I always ask, hey, you know, what's going on? What's up? And like, you know, you know, oh, just having issues at home, and you know, my parents, and you know, eventually, we, you know, we found out whether they were gay or lesbian, but you know, that's that's just you know who they are, and you know, it, it's good to see programs because we didn't have programs like that, you know, but it's good to see you know supporting your kids and say, hey, you know what, you are who you are, we support you, we love you, and you know, don't be afraid, speak out, and use your voice. So, thank you very much. So next up, we have item 4.1, approval of the agenda. And see if I could get a motion. I'll move approval. Second. Second. All right. Uh, and I'll call and vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Right. Motion passes. Next up, item 5.1, approval of the January 22nd board meeting minutes. Can I have a motion? Move approval. Second. Um, I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Next up, item 6.1, public comments. Can I have a point of clarification on 5.1? Yes. I don't think that Tristy Acosta was at that meeting. So I wasn't sure I could she still abstained. vote yes for it. Thank you. Record my vote as a yes. Thank you. I'm right. not sure how she can approve minutes when she wasn't at the board meeting. That doesn't mean I'm not aware of what was in the minutes and that I didn't see it. Thank you. Can I My vote. I need a point of order on that, please. Do, uh, do we need? Um, she is able to do it as long as, um, as she stated, she watched the video. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. So, Eva, that'll be a yes vote for me. Thank you. Okay. Um, item 6.1, public comment. I will call the names in groups of three. We have you know, multiple comments. So the first three are Bill Beecher, Lillian Dean, and Jillian Reeves. Good evening, Bill Beecher. Uh, I'm back for a second time because I didn't have enough time the first time. So let's look at, we have a math problem. Hey, Nobody's. Mr. Beecher. Yes. Can you raise your podium up? Because I'd like that microphone to be closer to your mouth. Want me to choke? Because we can't hear, when the microphone is far away from the mouth, we're not able to hear very well up here. So I don't know, I'd like the public and the viewing public to be able to hear the comments of everybody here tonight. Thank you. Then again, I can just lean forward. Um, let's continue from where we were last week or a couple weeks ago. There are some possible causes, one of which is students are in high school behind in math. Hard to triage. Now, I've been working with a college student who understands calculus, but she doesn't finish her tests because... She didn't have to learn her multiplication tables because they were taped to her desk and they were hung on the wall. And so she's slow in arithmetic stuff, but she understands calculus. Elementary teachers are not capable. Students, and the way you look at that is students are two to four years behind in the eighth grade. If the teachers were capable, why aren't the students doing better? There's a pressure in high school to grade on the curve and not to the standard. And this only applies in the math area, not in any of the other subjects. I have a high school principal who told me this doesn't occur, but the teachers told me, yes, it does occur, and the state data says yes. And as I showed it the last time, over half of our students should be flunking in high school math, and yet that's not the way the grades are handed out. So there are remedies. Hire better math teachers, but this is almost impossible without a major pay increase for math teachers. There's a high demand for data analysis and artificial intelligence out in the community. And here's what mathematicians get paid. Bottom 10% make 60K, the average is 106, and the top 10% make 160K. So how can the school system compete? 
grade to the standard in high school, put it on the agenda, continue to do the same thing. We've seen this one before. Thank you for your time, and please put it on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Okay. Um, my name is Lillian Dean, and I'm a speech and language pathologist who worked very briefly in your Duncan Holbert preschool. I would like to speak to you about high quality early education. From birth to age five, a child's brain develops more than at any other time in life. At least one million new neural connections are made every second. The quality of a child's experiences in preschool helps shapes helps shape how their brain develops, which has a lasting impact on a child's ability to learn. It's much harder for these essential brain connections to be formed later in life. <clears throat> Children who experience more positive interactions in their early years go on to be healthier and more successful in school and in life. The opposite is true as well. Poverty, family instability, and lack of access to quality early learning experiences can negatively impact a child's early brain develop, ve development and thus their long-term success. Investing in early education improves student achievement overall. Children who attend high quality preschool require less spe special education, are less likely to repeat grades, have fewer behavioral problems in school, graduate at a higher rate and have lower incarceration rates. As adults, they are more likely to be employed and earn higher incomes. For every dollar invested in a high quality early childhood program, $8 is saved, leading to a public benefit of over $100,000 per student. Children who are at risk for school failure are the most strongly affected by the quality of their preschool. Sadly, the most vulnerable children often attend the lowest quality programs. Aside from the obvious of skilled teachers and adequate facilities, a high quality preschool program also needs the following. A minimum class time of a half day or three and a half hours. A full day is better. And I don't think I'll have time for all this, so. Two of the classrooms I worked in at Duncan Holbert were two, oops, can I go one more second, 20 more seconds? All right, that's time. Okay. I, I, have articles um, that support the research articles that support everything I just said, plus the things I didn't have time to say. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board and Dr. Rodriguez. Um, I wanted to address the issue of our low attendance rate. I understand the need to raise our ADA rate, but implying this relies solely on teachers and admin is ridiculous and misguided. For instance, I have a student that has only been to school seven half days. This has been a pattern since kindergarten with her um, not showing up at all for the second and third trimester of second grade. Um, I have gone above and beyond offering to help her find rides to school, um, ride the bus with her, sitting and talking with her on my breaks and lunches. Um, her PVPSA counselor has taken her and her mother to doctor's appointments, um, helps her mom fill out important forms and documents. Um, I also had her brother several, several years ago and helped him get into sports and went to several basketball games. Um, admin has also done several home visits and still this year she has not been to school. Um, it's not only me, it's, I've heard several stories um, of teachers doing amazing and meaningful things, not just at my school, at tons of schools around the district. Um, what else can we do as a district to get our ADA to 97%? Truthfully, truthfully, I feel like we, as teachers and staff, are doing all we can to support our students. Um, if you have strategies backed by data, we are open and willing to try them. But putting up a superficial banner and hoping this changes anything is a waste of resources. Thank you. Next, we have Barbara Knapp, Chris Webb, and Julie Valens. Uh, 
Good evening. I'm Barbara Knapp. I'm in my 20th year with PVUSD. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Bradley Elementary. I've got um, two daughters who went through PVUSD schools. One is about to graduate from UCSC in June, and the other one is in the teacher credential program at CSUMB. We love our PVUSD schools. Um, I'm here to talk about the salary negotiations and being connected with the um, attendance. I'm a little confused how you can ask us to have anything to do <laughs> with the students' attendance. Um, I'm wondering, are you expecting us to make phone calls and demand that parents bring their sick children to school so that we can get our extra $40 a month that you're offering? Or what a colleague said to me is that this might be just a wink wink from you all to tell us not to take roll so that we can get that butt in the seat money. So we don't know what's going on. How are we supposed to control the attendance? It just doesn't seem Right. Thank you. Good evening. I'm uh, Chris Webb, teacher at Renaissance. Um, I first wanted to thank Joe and Ruth for coming out and informing us that our uh, water situation is being addressed and that we'll have uh, new RO filling stations. And I trust that We'll also have um, transparent monitoring with distinctions between chromium-3 and chromium-6 going forward. Um, I also wanted to raise some concerns I have about uh, maybe overemphasis on PBIS. I'm all about lowering uh, suspension rates and different trends and stuff, but I, I worry sometimes we're looking like too much at the numbers and missing like some of the big picture. Last year we had some admin issues and uh, then this year, some of the things I'm seeing with the new admin, who's been really good, um, is, is suggesting to me that there's, a, there's just an overemphasis on this, and it's degrading some of the academic standards of the school, which, uh, you know, I'm a teacher who's, ever since I've been there, I've been trying to overcome some of the stereotypes that are at that school. And we have a very successful progress monitoring system, which, the, which we, we, we achieved model continuation school status with this system. And I, I would invite the, the board or anyone who's interested, if they have questions about this system, come, let us present to you, let us speak to you, and, and let's, let's clear up any misunderstandings there might be about it. Because this, this, this seems to be uh, a negative influence that is playing upon our admin, and it's undermining student accountability. Um, it's, uh, there's you know, lower standards for academics. It's almost like we're being turned into like a babysitting program. That's not why I got into teaching, and that's not gonna serve my students well when they leave. There is gonna be real consequences when students leave and then they, uh, they get the wrong message that uh, there's, no, there's no accountability for anything. This is like when, you know, with our students, this is increased charges, this is uh, losing their car, repossessions, and I also think one thing that's particularly crazy about it is it undermines even attendance so then to say that our raises would be uh, attached sorry. to attendance, a system that's being undermined, it's kind of like stabbing us in the back in a way. So I just want to make that point. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Julie Valens. I'm a teacher at MSD School, and I was here a couple of months ago to talk about a specific trilingual student I have and the fact that we had no SLP or speech and language teacher at our school. And now I can come to you and very gratefully say that we have a wonderful new SLP and we're very grateful and excited. And I wanna thank Mr. Klappenbach for his support after I spoke and also I wanna thank Carrie Knott who is the interim SLP. Um, when we didn't have an SLP. So I wanted to come and give that happy update, but I also wanted to use that as a plea to please, please make it 
make it competitive to work here so people want to stay. I'm, I've been at MSD 19 years and I'm always scared that we're going to lose all these passionate, dedicated, educated, capable teachers and support staff. And we have to be competitive so that we can keep people. We've become sort of a joke in the area of having a reputation of having such high turnover, but we have such amazing families and kids and teachers. So please, Dr. Rodriguez and the board and everybody who's involved in the negotiations, take into account that we need to make salary, caseload, benefits competitive so people will stay and they don't have to come and ask you for help when we don't have an SLP. Thank you. We can have the next three people line up. Uh, Lorenzo Holquin. Um, Jos Josue Vega Hungo and Lizbeth. Good evening. My name is Lorenzo Hoquin, um, the current bike tech teacher at PV High School. I'm the last one to recently get my teaching credential in the single subject of transportation in November by the state through um, Ventura High School, uh, County of Education. I'm here to advocate for our program and ask, you know, if you can put Project Bike Tech on the next agenda. And I encourage you guys to come and visit Project Bike Tech at PV High. I've only seen one of you. So I encourage you to come visit. This is a certification that we give out to one, our students. This is a current student. He's, he's a he's awesome student. He's a, I'm a little nervous, but it's okay. <laughs> this is Caleb, and he's here. I didn't ask him to come here, he just showed up. I was like, whoa, okay, cool. Um, you could tell he has four badges, each badge is each student has, you have to keep complete the modules, you have to get it 80%. These are things that in bike shops, that the bike owners make them get. This is something we offer at Project Bike Tech. We started here in Santa Cruz County, now we're in six states. You know, I want you to come, come visit us off the paper. Come and see us tangibly. Going for our program, we've also expanded you know, we're, we help with the earn a bike program after school. We're helping mentor high school students from PV for incoming kids from Cesar Chavez, Rolling Hills, Palo Valley Middle School. I know it's kind of out of the way, but they still come. And these young kids are getting mentored by Project Mike Tech students as well as PV students. I recommend that you put us on the agenda, hopefully, and we can do a presentation. Thank you. My name is Lisbeth, and um, I would really hope that you guys reconsider of us being a, I don't know, I forgot what it's called. Um, <laughs> part of part of PV, because it really helps out with like job experiences. It really helps out us have like community hours, it helps us connect with kids. It helps us um, be like role models to students, saying like, you may come like from a bad place, like you may be not be doing good at school, but you could pass it on to kids who are not doing good at school and say what opportunities you can have. Like I will be always be stressing out, and then I'll go home, be all stressed out even more. And but since I earned the bike, it helps me release stress more. It helps me <laughs> release stress because I get to tell kids who are also maybe dealing the same thing as me how they could deal with it. Like um, my bike got stolen, and I have some kids who also have experiences of their bikes getting stolen. But in Earn a Bike, they get to learn how to make new bikes. If they ever get stolen, they get to make new bikes. They get to fix bikes. And they, then they get to pass it on to other students, their own like students or their own family members, so then they could get out in nature more. 
because it really helps you kind of connect out with nature and it also helps you can be aware of cars also because we also teach them of, of their signals we teach them how they should be aware of cars because there are crazy drivers and now bikes <laughs> and then if they use bikes they know to be more aware they know what signals and then if they ever end up in a court case, they could win because of the crazy drivers. <laughs> They'll have, they say like they do the signal. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so hello, my name is Josue Vega. Um, and I am an 11th grader at Power Valley High School and I am a mentor for Earn a Bike. Um, with Earn a Bike, I have been able With, Earn, with the Bike Santa Cruz County. Um, ultimately, these programs help us interact with students and in, learn further about ourselves, but also um, these programs help students, helps us, helps my peers, because it helps us prevent um, to stay somewhere after school and learn further about ourselves and the world. Um, yeah, so there are many things wrong in the world, um, unfortunately. But um, we learn further about things and we are able to make connections. Um, so yeah, um, instead of trying to take a program away like this, um, you should probably raise the teacher's salaries and give them fair contracts. And instead of posting pictures on social media saying that everything is fine when it's really not, maybe you should actually do something about it. Thank you. And if I can have the next uh, three speakers line up, um, Caleb Hamlin, Elizabeth Hernandez, and Brandon Dinitz. Uh, how's it going? I'm a representative of Powell Valley High School Bike Tech Technology too. Um, I mean, throughout the class, I've learned so much. We have a little saying in class, bike tech, life tech, because it's not only bike tech, but we learned so many life skills and the people there. And it's really like, even our teacher, he's, he's really brought our class together as a little small community. And not only that, but we help out the community, you know? Like we go out to a, like at the bike shack and help out. We fix little kids' bikes. We, you know, we just try to help out everybody, and if you observe the school, there's not too many hands-on uh, classes, you know? Like, in fact, this is the last one left, so, I mean, it kind of helps them out, especially the kids that aren't too, uh, the kids that are more uh, hands-on. It really helps them learn, so thank you. Just to make a note, once an agenda item opens, I can't take any additional public comment card. I did receive a, an additional one, which I will accept for this time, but I can't accept any further cards for the public comment. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Elizabeth Hernandez. Um, I am a bike tech alumni. I graduated from PV High in 2013. I took this course in 2012 and I was the first TA in 2013. Um, I'm here to support bike tech. 
Um, it's been brought to my attention that this um, course elective at PV High is going to get cut. To my knowledge, it's the only and last hands-on um, course so hand, to work with our hands. Like, why would we take that away from these students? It's, it's not like this course has been a, a true motivation and given me so much passion um, with my future career opportunities. I happen to work at the UC Davis bike shop. And in fact, I actually brought my bike that I created with Bike Tech over there. That was created in 2012 thanks to Bike Tech. And that is my wait, like mode of transportation that I've been using here in Watsonville, our community. Didn't we just get recently um, bike lanes? We gotta put them to use. Don't we have high obesity rates in our community? Well then let's give this, let's keep this opportunity for the students so they can be allowed to ride bikes and within our community, explore, use sustainable transportation, you know, have a sense of freedom to be out there, to be riding. And I don't know what else to say. I mean, I'm really disappointed that this is even being considered to cut this course from PV High. And, you know, I brought my bike here to come to show that, like, you know, how much this bike tech class have really inspired me to keep moving forward. And thank you. <laughs> Um, hello, my name is Brandon Denise. I'm a resource specialist, uh, fifth year in the district. I'd like to start by thanking you guys for letting me speak here before you. Um, I'm here to speak about the lack of negotiations that's currently going on. Um, the reality is, is I don't want to be here. I didn't leave my classroom until 6 o'clock this evening because of the overwhelming amount of work that you pile on to your special ed teachers. Um, what's unfortunate, though, is I have to be here because this board has not been negotiating in good faith. Um, by attempting to connect an increase in teacher salary to an increase in student attendance, because, you know, it must be our fault that the kids are leaving this district, and not the fact that we have classrooms without heat, classrooms closed to mold, and schools with toxic levels of chromium in the water. Um, what you guys are essentially doing is been offering non-starters and negotiating in bad faith. But then again, that's your strategy, isn't it? Lie about the numbers, mislead the public, and bank on the fact that your teachers will be so discouraged, so overworked, and so disgusted with your tactics that we'll roll over and accept whatever offer you guys have for us. And I'm here today to tell you that that's not going to work. Your games, your tactics, it's over. It will not work. You will not defeat us. We will not back down. We are here to improve the quality of life for our students and to fight their, for their future. So I ask you, what are you here for? So if I can have the next three speakers, um, Jesus Magdaleno, Ari Parker, and Sarah Leonard. Hi, good evening. My name is Jesus. I am a former Bike Tech alumni, and I'm very like, you know, it's sad to me they want to take away this class. I don't know how to explain this to y'all, but bike tech was some, so important to me in high school because in high school it was like, it's like my basically a nine to five job. It's like, oh, I have to go to class, I gotta do this, this, like whatever, just to get the grade. Bike tech, I was like, wow, I'm gonna get this class in sixth period, I know it's gonna be fun. It's not like any other class. We're actually working on stuff. I believe when I was, I took it, junior and senior year. Sure, we read, we read instructions on how to do it. But after, right after we finished reading the instructions, we got to work on the bikes. And I seen PV, I went to PV. I have, there's no other classes that offer, offer anything like that. I know there was a fabrication class, they also took it away. So, I don't know what to tell you guys. And Bitec is also helping me a lot. You know, Thanks to Bitech, I have the job that I have right now. I work currently at Calfee Design with my former teacher, Patrick Alvidres. And I gotta say, 
it wasn't for bike tech, I definitely wouldn't have that job. I'd probably be, still be a custodian at Twin Lakes Church, cleaning up stalls, and I sure as heck don't want, it, <laughs> don't want that job anymore. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman, President, Daniel Dodge, and board members. Hi, my name is Ari Parker. Um, I am a teacher and have been in the Paro Valley Unified School District for 33 years. Um, I also happen to be an elected member of the Watsonville City Council, but tonight I am not speaking in that elective capacity or on behalf of the city of Watsonville. Um, I'm confused. I received an email from Chona and HR and it said the following. 2019-2021% uh, increase contingent upon a 97% student attendance rate. My reactions? Insane. Illogical. Crazy. Um, exacerbating an unnecessary division between the district office administrators and teachers. Um, out of touch with reality. I've spoken to many former school board members um, from the PVUSD as well as other districts, they agree. I, I don't know if you know exactly what they're sending out, but they sent that out to us. And for me, as somebody who is pretty much, I, I've been here all my life. I went through K through 12, Paro Valley Unified, and became a teacher here as well. And I don't, oh, well, I'll, I'll go to that in a minute. So my job is to teach. The job I have at Bradley School, I teach. I teach. I would like to see the district bargain in good faith. We're a year and a half right now without a contract, is that right? And I find it ridiculous that we're gonna move to three years again like we did before because you can't be advocates for us as well as for all the children in this. Teachers are never here to break the bank. We're here to make it happen. Any program that you decide on, we deliver. And you keep adding to it. So thank you. And the, my last message, two messages, please bargain in good faith and direct your administration to do so. And all my students in fifth grade always knew their multiplication facts before they left the room. Good evening. My name is Sarah Leonard. I teach fourth grade at Valencia. I've been there for 13 and a half years, or 13 years, and a MSD for seven and a half years. It's really nice to see my sisters and brothers from both schools here tonight in large numbers. Um, woo! I have copies of this if you want, but it doesn't seem like that's the protocol, but they're here if you'd like them. Um, I'm here, obviously, to speak about teachers and um, the bizarre um, recent situation that we find ourselves in. Um, education Resource Strategies conducted a study recently that found that in 30 states, average teacher pay is less than the living wage for a family of four. According to the Sacramento Bee, average teacher pay in California public schools is $82,746 as of last year. It is the highest in Mountain View Los Altos Union High School District with teachers earning $136,500 average salary. This is still not enough for teachers in that district to buy a median priced home at $1.2 million for however. The average teacher salary in PVSD is $60,058 with a median house price of $869,000. When we put standard of living together with our cost of living here on the beautiful Central Coast, we find something very troubling. That in fact, Santa Cruz County is the fourth least affordable place to live, not in California, but in the United States. Think about this for a minute. The solution seems to be to help teachers afford housing by giving us vouchers for teacher loans and subsidized housing. This is absolutely cringeworthy and missing the target by miles. How incredibly insulting to provide written flyers and emails touting the idea of teachers needing subsidized housing at all. The subtext being that we are not worth more salary. The latest effort is to make the 1% meager salary in 
increase contingent upon 97% ADA for the first year, and worse with an expectation needing to be met with an increase of 4.5% more kiddos for the district average the second year in order for teachers to receive their 1% pay raise. That was two minutes. You see where I'm going with this. It's laden with statistics that don't work. And it's not okay. And I really implore you who live in this community to accept that we are on the front lines of heroic work every day. And we deserve to not be here. We deserve to be at home refueling for another day at the heroic work that we do. If I can have the next three people line up. We have Christina Carter. Pat Alvidrez and Aaron Miller. I'm Christina Carter. I teach at Minty White. Uh, this is my tenth year there. I've been. T um, I'm here to talk, like most of all my colleagues. I am. Uh, appalled that my responsibility is to make sure that 97% of my students are there every day. I'm there every day. To today, all of my students were there in my class, but I'm there every day. How about a tailgate party for teachers? That uh, I really believe that we need to dig deep. I dig deep every day for my students, and I think the the district needs to dig deep as well to uh, compensate us reasonably and for us to have a caseload of students that will allow students to grow and learn um, in a safe and uh, environment that will allow them and all their differences to thrive. Uh, please dig deep for us and keep bike tech. Thank you. All right, good evening. Thank you for everybody for being here. This is amazing. There's a lot on your guys' plate tonight, so definitely taking a lot of things into consideration. So uh, my name is Patrick. I, uh, I work at Calfee Design. I'm their production manager. I was uh, uh, fortunate enough to be a, a predecessor to Lorenzo for the bike tech class, taught for three years. Um, uh, obviously, you heard from my associate, uh, uh, Chewy. <laughs> anyway, so um, again, we're here talking about bike tech, and it seems like this is a big question of whether or not this is a worthwhile scenario. I think that's ridiculous. Literally, uh, talking about attendance and stuff, this is a class that, when I was teaching, pretty much had full class the whole time. And it seemed like it was also a dumping ground for people that didn't have a place, right? So, I mean, seriously, this is uh, pretty ridiculous. Um, the amount of uh, effort that we put in as teachers, all, all across, obviously, in, in the school district, but uh, specifically in our class, uh, we offer them opportunities. Uh, he was showing you a, a small uh, placard that you can earn. That's just a new thing that we're doing. We also offer two certificates. Uh, one for, uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry, also really nervous. <laughs> uh, but these certificates are basically able to take to job sites, right? So Jesus, I offered a job for him because I worked with him firsthand. I knew exactly what his uh, capabilities were. Um, amazing, right? And it wasn't because he could type on a computer or write a paragraph or uh, cut a piece of paper into some shape and mold it into something artistic. He had a different type of art. It was uh, hands-on, and it was very skilled, you know? Uh, <clears throat> so he's been working with me for, what, eight months? Eight months so since then, he's now taken on a lot of different jobs. He's working with carbon fiber. He's working on a, in the machine shop. He's doing mathematics on a daily basis, right? Matt, we teach math in bike tech. Uh, building a wheel has a, you know, a lot of geometry and uh, arithmetic. And so anyways. Bike tech, keep it. If you don't, you're going to be sorry because the numbers are going to keep going down. And we're going to lose awesome people in this community. They're going to provide more jobs and more ability, right? So please. Thank you very much.
Good evening, my name is Erin Miller. Um, I'm a parent of a student from in the bike tech area at PV High School. And I came here to support them, but like listening to this just as a community member, I'm really disappointed. Like education should be top priority, not thrown to the bottom of the stack. Um, when I was in school, I went to Santa Cruz. You know, I grew up in Santa Cruz and we had metal shop, we had wood shop, we had, we did plays and drama and all this stuff because every student learns differently. Like you can't just throw them all in one class and say, hey, you know, if you make the cut, great. You know, if not, then good luck with life. Because it's not the way it works. You got so many dedicated teachers here that are willing to work with their students. Like, they should be paid for that. Like, it takes a lot out of you to spend all that extra time and all that extra just love, you know, to try and give these kids a brighter future. I still remember my fifth grade teacher. He had so much influence in my life that I, he opened my whole mind to a whole world out there. And I'll never forget him. You know, and I'm sure that there's lots of kids that will remember their teachers. And then, you know, second generation comes around. I was fortunate enough to have my son go to the same elementary school I did, and he was able to have some of the same teachers I did. But, you know, that's not always the case because teachers won't stick around, you know. So step up your game or you're going to have, it's going to be like the old school Watsonville where everyone's running in gangs, killing each other on the street over nothing right, because they don't have the education, they're not learning the way that they can learn. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. So our next three are Ton Kennedy, Cindy, I'm sorry I can't read your last name, and Philip Wise. <laughs> Good evening, superintendent, trustees. I'm the regional coordinator for Project Bike Tech. Um, we're now, I think, actually in seven states nationwide, and we have dozens of schools contacting us every month interested in opening, opening up new programs because they see the value of bike tech, hands-on education, career technical education that meets kids where they're at with things that they're passionate about, with things that they're excited about. And I really hope that the district reconsiders the direction that you've taken some of the CTE in and you work with us. We have been here, we've been working with you, we've been working with your students for the past 11 years. There's been about a thousand students who've gone through the bike tech classroom at Paro Valley High School, not to mention all of the hundreds of students who went through the bike tech classroom at Aptos High School, which you closed last year. I'm pretty emotional because this program is very close to my heart. I started the Earn a Bike program in collaboration with bike tech in 2015. Um, as has been mentioned, we brought students from Cesar Chavez, from Rolling Hills, from Lakeview Middle School, from Pajaro Middle School to, Watson, or to Pajaro Valley High School into the bike shop, and we worked with students from PV High and graduates of, of Bike Tech to help the high school students learn mentorship and job-ready skills, and middle school students get inspired and come away with bikes and helmets and lights and locks. And uh, as Liz mentioned, you know, maybe they learn something and maybe if they are in a court case, they will retain that information. I'm kidding, but no, that's, there's a lot that gets transferred beyond what you can calculate on a spreadsheet and what fits into the CTE pathway, uh, you know, checklist. So please think bigger than just a checklist and just a spreadsheet. Come visit the class and uh, bring us back for a full presentation, more than two minutes. Thank you. And this is just the people that we called today. So you can imagine how much support there is for bike tech in the Thank community. You. Thank you. Yeah, the share city cat in this year. Good 
I just want to introduce myself in my language. My name is Cindy Kate Denihi. Um, my family, I have family all over the place here in California and also back in Arizona. Um, I'm, I'm here because I'm supporting Bike Tech. Um, this is a teaching that, you know, that supports the community and it's something that, you know, that we connect our youth to, to the area, to the land. And I believe that, you know, if you guys, you know, take this away from these teachings, the curriculum, um, then you lose a lot of things. You lose, you know, a way of thinking. You, you lose, you know, being conscious of the environment. And the reality behind all that is basically, you know, our life is not getting, you know, just daily lives and daily expenses is not getting, it's not going to get cheaper. It's going to get more expensive. So when we have these bike co-ops within, you know, Santa Cruz, uh, here in Watsonville, different places, you know, we give that chance to have our youth, you know, learn this skill, learn this skill to, you know, um, have transportation. And for the school to say that this isn't a form of transportation, how is that? How is that justified? When you see the markings on the road, like as the students had said here before, you know, um, how is that not a form of transportation? How is that a reason why you want to cut this program? So I just want to ask, you know, really consider a lot of these things because if you think about it, the youth, they were supported as soon as their families bought these bikes for them. Literally, your parents are holding you to support you, to let you go, to try that experience, and to open that first gift, a big gift under a tree. You're like, wow, okay, and we all understand that. So just letting you know, recognize what you're giving up. You're giving up the future. All right, thank you. Good evening, my name is Philip Weiss, just here speaking as a member of the community in support of the Bike Tech program. Just want to say I've seen how empowering it has been and the skills it's uh, giving the youth in our community. Uh, we've heard from the students here some of the skills and empowerment and gives them firsthand. And I think we need more tech programs, not fewer tech programs. And this bike tech program is one of those wonderful programs that we need to keep and we need to support. And as a bike advocate and someone who rode their bike here and seeing our community trying to welcome this, yeah, like has been mentioned with bike lanes and things like this, having this program sends a powerful message that we actually do value this. Uh, and also, yeah, as a cyclist, I do need these kids to help fix my bike when I can't. So <laughs> that alone is an incentive for me to keep that, that bike program here, uh, having skilled kids to help me out when I can't do it. So. I uh, implore you guys to, to keep this program and support it. Thank you. Was that Felipe Hernandez that? No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. The next three I have are David Patino. Uh, already had that one. Um, Julian, I'm sorry, I can't quite read the, the last name, but Julian. Mandohano? Mandohano? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Rolando Herrera and Ivan Flores. Good evening, Dr. Rodriguez and school board members, members of the community. I'm here to support Project Bike Tech tonight. As a CTE teacher, one of the few left after the CTE teacher purge last year, I feel it's my responsibility as a CTE teacher to come forward and say what an important impact CTE classes have on attendance. CTE classes have been shown statistically over decades to increase student engagement. I have heard many times that other CTE teachers that share this with me, and my students share this very phrase with me, your class is why I come to school today. Your class is what gets me excited. When I hear about more CTE teachers going away from our district, it makes me confused. 
or closing different programs down. That makes me confused. I thought this was about enrollment, boosting enrollment. I'm trying my best to keep my program going with the support of our new CT coordinator, the grant writer who um, Dr. Rodriguez recommended and has done wonders for our CTE programs and funding. The classes get more and more exciting. And it hurts my heart to think that we would be closing such a valuable program that engages students on such a high level. I want there to be some type of recognition of how important these programs are for students who really feel that this is their passion and that they want to follow their passion. Help those students connect with what's important to them. Let them make the decision. And obviously, there's more students that want to be in this class than there are seats in the class. I feel like it's an important I feel like it's an important thing that we'd be losing if we were to close it down. Please reconsider. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you guys for being here and actually giving us a voice to talk to you guys about this thing that's going on. So I am an old student from Pajaro Valley High School. I took this ROP class back in 2013 for bike tech. And I want to say it's going to be a big mistake getting for that class. I owe so much to that class. Everything that I have up to this point, I owe it to them. Especially my, at the teacher at the time, Jason Carr, he helped me have the job where I am now. I'm a current mechanic at Family Cycling Center or in Capitola. And it goes to show that the program works. It might not work for everybody, but it can help any student that wants to do something with what they want to do in that program. It works. So I want to say that, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just blanking at this point. I was not ready for this. <laughs> but I want to say that kids need these programs. It's something that will benefit them in the future. It'll prepare them in life. It's going to help them socially. It's going to have, help them like just want more. They'll know what they're going to want to do in life. It may not be bikes. It can also be like computers. It can also be like building stuff. It can also be like even automotive stuff. BB High School at the time, we did not even have a lot of programs to begin with. We were jealous of what's in high school because they're like, oh, you guys have automotive classes? Oh, we don't have that. Bike tech was the closest thing that we got to being able to do mechanical stuff and hands-on stuff while being on campus. It was kind of like our little gem that we had, and it's something that I valued, and I wish that program still keeps on going forward because a lot of us are helping the communities, especially that shop, not our, just ours, the shops here in Watsonville, deeper in Santa Cruz, deeper in Monterey. A lot of those shops get kids from these programs, and those shops need us to help run those those businesses, basically. So it benefits all of us. We are basically the start of something that we're going to need in the future. So thank you guys for your time. Hello, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Ivan. I attended the Project Bike Tech class in 2010, and it was the only class that engaged me, allowed me to uh, learn about, you know, not just things that you normally learn about in school. Uh, I was, I applied myself, they, they uh, motivated me to problem solve, do all these things that, you know, I never thought I would be doing in life. I had a different goal, but, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm kind of nervous. Uh, <laughs> Shaking. Please don't get rid of it. Um, it's gotten me very far in life, and it's not only working for me, it's working for a lot of other people, as you know. Uh, everyone else is speaking here. <laughs> Project Bike Tech. <laughs> <laughs> We can have the next three speakers line up. Aurelio Gonzalez, um, Colleen Powers, and Salvador Loa. Loa? Uh, good evening, board. Uh, good evening, Michelle. Um, my name is Aurelio Gonzalez. Uh, I'm a resident of the city of Watsonville. 
I'm also a city councilman, and I'm also a product of the Prokhor Valley Unified School District. Uh, I, first, I want to apologize to all the teachers, because um, I was one of those rough students. Um, <laughs> and, and, um, but, but that didn't stop me from succeeding. Uh, I, I originally came to talk about something else, which I'll get to, but just briefly. Uh, Classes like uh, tech school, uh, mechanics, small engines, it helped me tremendously. Uh, it helped me stay focused. Um, I wasn't successful in school, I'll be honest. I dropped out a week before high school graduation, uh, but that's because uh, the way I grew up. Uh, it had nothing to do with the teachers. The teachers are the ones that actually supported me through the, through the whole process. So I thank them a lot. Um, they do deserve a lot more money that they can make because of the, the, the headaches that I gave them. Uh, I think sting still linger, um, but I was successful. I did move on to construction, and I became a, a very successful person in construction. Now I'm happily retired now, and but also the ability that the teachers gave me was I am able to be a city councilman. I'm able to troubleshoot. I'm able to look at at, at problems and and engage those. Um, but I'm also involved with the community, and I think community is really important. Uh, the tech. Bike. We're, we're in a movement right now to promote transportation. We're in a movement in our community to engage our community to get on bikes, to get alternative transportation. And so what does that come? We need jobs that are going to support those. And if these tech job bikes help do that, then we need to keep those kind of programs alive. Um, with that, I'll leave that subject alone, <clears throat> and I'll come back to what I came to address. Um, last year, I was... Uh, I was able, with the support of the community, to bring the Santa Cruz Symphony, and also with the support of the Unified School District, to bring the Santa Cruz Symphony here. If you could just give me you guys a little quick minute. Um, and so we want to bring it back again. So I'm hoping that I'm reaching out to you today for the school district to help us bring back the kids and, and do a concert again, uh, some music in the park. Um, but I'm also looking for uh, volunteers, because I am a docet. I will be attending Calabasas, Mini White, and... Um, Calabas is a mini white to me fue el otro. But there's a third third school that I'll be going to. Um, but anyways, the there there is a link up program and, and it's really important that the, the the community get involved in this because it's not just bicycles, it's music, it's art, um, and, and sports that bring kids and help these teachers I guess get that ninety seven percent attendance also at the same time. Thank so um, with that, if anybody can come help out in March, um, I know I'll get this, because techie-wise techie I wasn't. Um, two minutes, but two minutes. But sorry. On March 2nd, March 3rd, at the Mallow Center, uh, we'll need help for ushers, and uh, it'll be the school, the school district will be there with the Santa Cruz Symphony in performing. So I hope to see you all folks there. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, good evening, board members and Dr. Rodriguez. First of all, I'm going to change my comments a little bit. I've never heard of Bike Tech, but it sounds like a fantastic program, and it sounds like a great way to boost student attendance, because I would go to that class. Okay, so, but back to this. I am a parent of two elementary school students that go to Alianza Charter School, yay, and I'm also a teacher in my 19th year at Amesti Elementary School. My children are opposite. One of them will go to school no matter what. She is coughing. She will steal the Tylenol to take it to convince me she does not have a fever. At her parent conference, her teacher said, you know, Lucia, you don't need to come to school when you're coughing this badly, okay? But she knows that she wants to go to school. She loves school. But she shouldn't really be there because it's really hard for other kids to learn. My other child has learning disabilities and does not like school, if she has a hangnail, she doesn't want to go. So I have the extremes in my household. I have the girl that is dying to go to school, literally, and the one that really, really does not want to go. Neither of those has anything to do with their classroom teacher. They both love their classroom teachers, and they haven't had a teacher that they didn't like. But it's not affecting their attendance. One loves school, and one is scared to death. Uh, also, to go to a MESTI, my class mostly has 100% attendance every single day. My students love to come to school. Even if somebody has died in the family, they still want to come after the funeral. They come with fevers. 
I have to send them back home because their parents think, oh my gosh, my child needs to be in school. I'm going to send her. Then I have a very sick, very infective student in my class that you can, you can figure out what happens to the rest of the class. Um, I have students that go to the dentist, they get a filling field, they come to class, their cheek is numb and drool is coming out of it. So that's what parents are sending to, parents are committed to our school. So that's what I want to say. Thank you. I'm wonderful. Good evening, my name is Salvador Lua. Um, I'm here in support of Project Bike Tech, and as a product of the Watsonville Brown Berets Bike Shack, uh, I am I'm able to tell you that I learned a lot of my skills through that bike program, and and uh, I was there when Lorenzo first started off. You know, I was I was being I was a high school volunteer for the Bike Shack, and I was able to teach Lorenzo a lot of his a lot of the skills that he learned early on. And and he took it and he ran with it and with Ken, uh, Tom Kennedy like they've they've evolved this program into something uh, that retains the values of the bike shack which is uh, soft skills learning is uh, helping out the community is environmental uh, awareness mindfulness and and they've made it into a curriculum which is obviously changing lives for the better and I'm just here again to support it and yeah thank you everybody. Our next three speakers, if I can have you line up, Adam Scow, Eliseo Zapeta, and Chris Alonso. Uh, thank you, members of the school board, uh, for having me today. This, my name is Adam Bolaño Scow. I am the grandson of a farm worker, the son of school teachers, a substitute violinist with the Santa Cruz Symphony, and a very mediocre cyclist. Three things on the uh, item I want to speak about. I want to support, I want to thank you for that great music event you had with the symphony and Aurelio and all your leadership in making that happen. We should make that happen again. We need to have arts in the schools. I want to speak in favor of the Project Bike Tech for that, for all their work. I was there with Lorenzo, got the award, and I want to support that 100% as we move to more sustainable transportation. Green New Deal. Yeah, you got a big award. Did I mention I'm running for Congress? <laughs> we have a climate crisis and an affordability crisis. And so the climate crisis, we're going to have more biking. That's going to be part of the solution. And in the affordability crisis, we got to increase teacher pay. We got to increase teacher pay. And so we are losing teachers throughout this state, throughout this region, throughout our district and our school district. So I want to encourage you respectfully to work with the teachers to increase the pay. I think they're asking for a modest raise. I'm supporting the Sanders plan. We should have a minimum floor of $60,000 a year. We are the richest state in the richest country. And I empathize with you. We're fighting over dollars. We're the richest, and we have a congressman and an incumbent who votes for every military budget hike he's ever seen. We gotta do better. There's no excuse for this. This is our survival at online. I wanna thank you for having me. I wanna thank everybody for being here today, and I look forward to seeing you later. Good evening, members of the board. Um, I have a son that is an alumni from uh, uh, Bike Tech. I want to say I'm a proud papa because he's working now at a car dealership as a master tech. Um, I've been um, doing volunteer work for Bike Tech and um, such an a, a amazing program. Um, you know, it, it, and it goes with the, the uh, um, bills of transportation that is kind of going all over the country. You know, now we have an infrastructure with, you know, bike lanes. We need to educate our kids to navigate. I mean, it's good for you. It's good for everybody. It's a healthy mode of transportation. And Bike Tech is teaching the kids, you know, um, uh, nutrition, uh, how to be self-sufficient, you know, manipulating tools, uh, uh, you know, visualizing what they need to do to fix, you know, their, you know, self-power vehicle. Um, that's how I, you know, uh, uh, through, through mechanics, that's how I, you know, I'm also a, a tech. Not only do I work on bicycles, I work with motorcycles, I work with cars, and I can fabricate you anything you want. So no joke. 
<laughs> so I feel pretty good about it. So when you work with bicycles, you know, they're all different. You know, you have to, you know, space things in a certain way. And that's where kids get, you know, all of this, you know, potential ideas on how to fix such thing. I think that consider this opportunity that we have because it's good for our community. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, school, uh, school board members. My name is Chris Alonso. I am the programs director for Bike Santa Cruz County, or as many have become t have known me now as the New Town. Uh, <laughs> um, I started a bike club uh, program today in Mission Hills Middle School in Santa Cruz. These are some of their surveys. So, kind of going along with that, I want to do a quick survey. How many of you raise your hands have bikes? Raise them high. Come on. How many of you know how to fix a flat tire? <laughs> All right. Well, that's one of the things that this program does. It allows these students, these youth, to become self-sufficient in something. As you've heard before, you had an individual that learned skills through this program and was able to take these skills over to UC Davis, use these skills while getting an education, and pr was able to provide for themselves. Um, you've heard that from other people, that it's, an op it's a way that these students are able to kind of be self-sufficient, even help their families if they need it. We know that a lot of families here have, uh, you know, two income earning parents. Sometimes students have to pitch in as well, you know, pick up a job after school or pick up, you know, their brothers and sisters or things like that. And so I just want to stress the importance of this program. Um, I just want to also give a shout out to Lorenzo and some of the youth that are here today. Um, I know that activity that we did last Thursday helped today, right? <laughs> um, but I want to talk about how this program really helps um, prepare the younger students, right? It helps the middle school students uh, attain a bicycle. These individuals right here are teaching those young students not only life skills, but they're teaching them how to uh, navigate a lot of things, right? They're being exposed to uh, individuals that are working uh, um, in city government through uh, planning, they're working with individuals that are working in public health, so they're being exposed to a lot of things, not just uh, working on a, uh, on a bicycle, not just learning how to fix a flat tire, but they're really learning a variety of skills. They're going to be the future city council members, mayors, they're going to be the future planners of this, of this community, they're going to be Thank the future you. school board members, so just keep that in mind. And I also want to give a shout out to all that the was teachers that are here. Thank you. Our last three speakers are Ramiro Medrano, Wendy San Juan, and Felipe Hernandez. <laughs> you, got, you got really excited there, Felipe. <laughs> Buenas noches. My name is Ramiro Medrano. I'm a counselor at PV High School, and I'm here today. Uh, to speak on both issues, uh, I'm going to try to beat the time. So I'm here, first of all, I mean, I'm here because of the, uh, you know, the contingency issue that, you know, we've been talking about, which is, again, I said it last time and I repeat it, it's ridiculous that you are tying a contingency to a 1%, a 1% raise to our salaries, right? And... What that is telling me is that, and I said it last time and I'll repeat it again, what, what it's telling me is that you're disconnected from this community. Because, you know, a lot of the, our chronically truant students, right, are for issues that are beyond the classroom. They are chronically truant, and I know this because I've been in home visits because students are chronically absent. I've been in, in deep conversations with parents. I've had students crying in my office, telling me why they don't want to go to school. It's because of anxiety, because of, you know, um, single parents, you know, and, and they have to take care of their, of their siblings because of extreme illness. So many issues, so many reasons why students are not going to school. And as a counselor, 
I've talked to our attendance office because I've noticed that there are students who haven't set foot in our schools since day one, yet they are still in our roles and they are still in our rosters. So I thought that the policy was that after 10 days they could get dropped, but students are not being dropped, which is affecting then our percentage of ADA, which now you are using against us and saying that if you want to raise, you have to, you have to raise this, this ADA percentage. It's just ridiculous. I invite you to come to a home visit with me. I invite you to come to a parent meeting where we're talking about chronically absent students. And then you will understand. That was people the, I know, I'm sorry. And, but someone who, and a, a program that is in touch with the community and that I've, I've called on multiple times to give me bikes, to give to students who have transportation issues is actually Project Bike Tech, okay? And so, not only are they, is this a, an important program, a hands-on program for students, it's also an important program that's in touch with the community and that actually helps students transport themselves to school. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Daniel Dodge and Michelle. Uh, well, I'm here to speak in favor of the bike tech program, earn a bike program. You know, we need to continue funding these programs that allow young people to work with their work with their hands. You know, actually holding cogs, flywheels, and derailers is important for as part of an education for young people. Uh, you know, right now we're in a time where we need more more tradespeople, and I think that these kind of programs allow them to to learn those skills, but also apply them to other things that they might encounter in life and education in the future. Things like becoming an engineer, becoming an urban planner. Uh, most of the folks that, I, that I've seen that are urban planners are, are avid bicyclists as well, and that's why they got into it. So these kind of programs are really important. We need more of them. Um, it provides well-paying jobs in our community. You know, a while back, earlier this year, the city made a decision to fund programs like Earn a Bike, uh, as well as bike safety training through Measure D funds because it falls in line with our strategic goals. We want, to trans we want to transform our city, our city center, into a walkable and bikeable friendly space. Recently, we've approved both the Complete Streets Plan that, re that promotes to reduce greenhouse gases and promotes active transportation. And we also, coordinating with the school district, um, passed our plan for safe routes to school that promotes student safety and walkable and bikeable routes to school. Um, I know some of our schools in the center of the city uh, have a lot of um, students that walk and that bike to school. And I think that those programs are also important, uh, important that we continue to making the city more, more walkable and bikeable in the core of the city uh, where the schools are downtown. As you know, we now have more, more green bike lanes in town. We have more coming. We want, we want the city to bike more and drive less. Programs like Bike Tech and Earn a Bike are assets in our community and will play a pivotal role in making a healthier and greener community. And last final thing is please bargain in good faith. Teachers deserve a fair contract. Thank you. Is Wendy... San Juan still here? Okay. Wendy San Juan? Okay. All right. Next up, we have employee organizations. Now is the time that we hear from our employee organizations. Each will have five minutes. So 7.1, we have PVFT. Good evening, board, Dr. Rodriguez. Um, all right, let me get my phone in order here. It's not cooperating. Okay, so um, you know, we're grateful for all of our members who are here, and, and I know that many of them had to go home because some of them, you know, got to get the kids to bed, got to do homework, and they have to prep their lessons for tomorrow because we give 110%. Um, and thanks to our community who have also come out strong for teachers' behalves, for their students' behalves because teachers and students are equal 
in that sense. Um, Mr. Beecher, we had words last time, and so I'll have some more words with you. Um, it is not the fault of our teachers for low test math scores. And a program like Bike Tech, which inspires students to be creative, to use their you know, different areas of their brain, that is math teaching out of the context of just looking at formulas. So I have, um, English is my second language, and I'm an audiovisual learner, uh, and I learned how to sew from my grandmother, and I, I was really, really good at patterning. I was pretty lousy at math when I was in elementary school, but I could actually cut a pattern. Um, and so those things didn't link until I went to college and studied design. And, and it took that long for me to understand, you know, like that, just the concrete part that I had in math, and then I was able to really apply it. And I taught math. Um, and I was also a scrappy punk kid uh, when I was, um, and I wasn't you know, always the best student. But here I am, the president of PVFT. Um, so, <laughs> um, you know, gotta fight for our rights. So, t our teachers are fully capable. We teach with our hands tied because we have many things that we have to meet. Um, and I'm really hoping that our board is hearing and, and not just letting it you know, go from into one ear and out the other, but like really taking it in that CTE, bike tech, is valuable for our community of learners. Um, and then yesterday I was in um, Dave Patino's construction class. It's a CTE class he spoke earlier. And I met this wonderfully, like just super happy young woman. That wasn't even her class. She was in there and she was working on a, an, on a physics project and she was collaborating there. The, her, the construction students were helping her build a base for her project. So that is what some of these courses do for our students, um, and they're valuable. <clears throat> so as one of the negotiating um, team members, uh, it's, it's been pretty frustrating to hold out any patience and, not, and, and as a math teacher, I also look at patterns. Um, and so the pattern for, this, for our district when negotiating with PBFT has been to, let's see if we can just tire the teachers out. Let's see if we could tire them out. Come spring, they'll start falling you know, off. They won't, they won't be as noisy because you know, they'll get tired and they'll just want to settle. It's not going to work. We're here for our students. And we're also wanting to actually bargain in good faith. We have asked, um, we have several proposals on for salary. So what you've been hearing a lot of is that 1% contingent. That applies to the K-12 salary schedule. We also have the ECE department that isn't um, funded on ADA, and we have an adult ed department. We have proposals for them, and we have not received a response to those since we delivered the original proposal. So just, I mean, like many ECE programs, ours is like pays our teachers poorly. So poorly that the lowest hourly r rate didn't meet the legal requirement as of January 1st of 2020. So the district had to add, you guys probably had to approve that 5% bump just for that cell. Um, just to meet the $13 an hour hourly rate. So, but you know what they, what our ECE teachers did get? More work. They got a list of extra duties that they need to do that are maintenance, landscaping, and um, custodial. So you're now asking them to take out the trash, check to make sure that all of the, all of the um, play structures are in good working order, um, which they're going to do anyways, but now is that it's now a written down task for them. They have a long checklist. So another way, another way is that um, the district has not respected our um, contract 
is by not um, coming to negotiate the impact of programs. So we, for instance, delivered to the district last spring of the previous, this last school year, a demand a bargain on um, the on the impact of the inclusion program. I'm going to finish this because you need to hear it. And um, they have not bargained with us at all. They implemented the program. We had sites that had issues, and we have yet to bargain over that. That is a complete disregard to our collective bargaining bargaining language. Um, and another way that um, today they disregarded that was um, having a straw poll at a high school site to go to a seven period day. So a straw poll, that's not in our CBA. We have specific language for a process when it comes to considering changing a schedule at a site. We have one public speaker for 7.1, Bill Beecher. Good evening again. Uh, I want to talk about the negotiation. Uh, PVFT is following a very proven method used in Los Angeles, Stockton, Denver, Chicago, which asks for higher pay, smaller classrooms. But because I love math, I can see this approach leads to a strike. Why? There's fewer teachers graduating from the colleges. That means over time, with an increasing number of students, you aren't going to have enough teachers to have smaller classrooms. So that should be a dead issue and should be off the agenda. Also, in the first interim that you saw in December, the district's going to cut 6% of the teachers. Then secondly, in regards to pay, it's always nice they talk about pay, but total compensation. The teachers in this district are compensated at 88% of the budget, almost all of it. That's better than 94% of all the teachers in this state. The problem isn't necessarily pay, but it's in the health benefits, which grow at 7% a year and is eating up the budget. I mean, eventually, there will be no money for the teachers because health benefits have killed it. Now, for me, what are the issues that should be talked about is why do we have 10% turnover of teachers each year, and the largest part of that are young teachers. Now, there's root causes behind that, and if you study that, maybe that helps in being able to negotiate a better contract. And as I said earlier, how can we pay the math teachers more so we can bring in good math teachers to improve our academic performance in the high schools? Then lastly, as a response, if the teachers are not the problem in math scores, do we blame the students? I don't think so. Thank you. Next up, 7.2. CSEA. Any representatives from CSEA? Seeing none. 7.3 PVAM, Pajaro Valley Association of Managers. No. 7.4 Communication Workers of America. No. Next up, item 8.1 Approve authorization to superintendent and CBO to negotiate Prop 39 facilities request preliminary offer. Uh, looks like 
report by you. Good Chief. evening, uh, yeah. board president, members of the board. Um, this item uh, follows the process for the Prop 39 Charter Appeal uh, in which uh, for Navigator Charter School, um, the process allows uh, the charter to submit a uh, facilities uh, appeal and it's agreed upon by statute by uh, a response by February 1st. Uh, we met with Navigator Charter and we agreed to an extension of that timeline to this Friday, February 14th which allows the district uh, to counter the preliminary offer. Um, once that is uh, submitted to Navigator Charter School, then they counter and review and have to submit by March 1st. Um, and then it is to be finalized by April 1st. Uh, if the offer is accepted, the parties must execute a facility use agreement uh, by May 1st. Uh, facilities would then need to be furnished and equipped and made available uh, to this charter school at least 10 days before the start of this coming academic year. Uh, for this request, we are requesting uh, authorization for the superintendent and CBO uh, to give authorization to negotiate the Proposition 39 facilities request and uh, preliminary offer. We have uh, several public speakers, so I'll call you in groups of three. Kevin Sved, Norma Morales, and Linda Munoz. Good evening, President Dodge, board members, Superintendent Rodriguez. I'm Kevin Sved, CEO of Navigator Schools, which operates Watsonville Prep School. We are very grateful for the facilities you provide Navigator students who reside in PVUSD boundaries. I want to share a perspective on the documents included with this agenda item. First, the Pajaronian article of December 20th, which stated Watsonville Charter School will be moving into the Gottschalks building, neglected to mention that we hadn't yet received approval from the city. So while that is our hope, um, it's, very, it's way too early to know whether that vision can actually be realized. This is why we have been exploring the possibility of how we might be able to expand within the current fence line uh, where we're located on the EA Hall site. And in the packet, you, you're provided a feasibility study that shows how that could be possible. Lastly, you have our 2020-2021 request for Prop 39 facilities. You may remember that the main thrust of Proposition 39, which was, which was approved by the voters back in November 2000, was to, reduce the, was to reduce the threshold required to pass California school district bonds from two thirds to a 55% vote, making it easier for school districts to meet facility needs. Main, pro main proponents to reduce this voting threshold, threshold were teachers and school districts. In order to grow the coalition needed to defeat anti-tax groups, a deal was struck to bring charter supporters into the coalition. The deal required districts to provide charter schools equitable facilities as part of the ballot initiative. If, if it were not for that coalition, it would not have passed by the close 53% of the voters. Thank you for considering Watsonville Prep's Prop 39 request, a request made possible by a broad coalition of public school supporters to benefit all public school students. Thank you very much. Good evening, board members. I am Linda Munoz. I'm a parent and a small group instructor at Watsonville Prep School. And I'm here tonight to thank you for the willingness to work with us as we plan for our next year at EA Hall. Our students are proud of their school. And as a parent, I am proud to be part of this school community. My daughter loves coming to school every day, especially be because before she was being bullied and had a hard time making friends. Now in Watsonville Prep, she has many friends and I always see her smiling. I really want to thank you for helping us create a school environment that makes her feel that way. I know we have work to do, but I hope together we can find a solution that works for all of us. Thank you once again. Has Norma Morales left? The next three are Kirsten Carr, uh, Sandra Flores, and Rosa Saavedra. Saavedra? Okay. 
Good evening. I'm Kirsten Carr. I'm the Director of Engagement and Partnerships at Navigator Schools, and I wanted to thank you for throwing a birthday party for me tonight. I love spending my 51st birthday with all y'all, so thank you. While we know there is still much work to do to create the collaborative partnership with all of you, we wanted to just take a moment to thank you for the efforts to date. First, 15 to 17 percent of our students qualify for special education services, and the Student Services Department has been incredibly helpful working with our Director of Student Services to ensure that we are providing top quality services for all students, making sure we get the records and everything on time. Additionally, as we've worked to provide, to work to both identify and provide services for the 10 percent of our students identified under the McKinney-Vento program, we have been reaching out to both district and county resources. So thank Thank you for that as well. And while these are just two of the partnerships where a district relationship is important, they highlight the work we can do for all students when we work as a village. Finally, while the work we do inside the classrooms is the main ingredient for the growth our students are showing in this inaugural year, such as the majority of our students surpassing their projected MAP growth in both English and math, we know the overall culture of the school environment is key to maintaining this progress. We want to thank you for this as well as for the fact our students are thriving on our WPS campus and we are fortunate to share that with EA Hall and we hope we can continue to find a solution which works for all of us. And just before I walk away, I'm gonna take one more second of birthday privilege. We just, uh, several of us in this room, just returned from the California Distinguished Schools program uh, where GPS was honored. But what made that special is our Gilroy Unified School District Superintendent went with us because that is the type of partnership we are still hoping to have and we have with our other districts, and it's something we are continuing to work on with you. So thank you. Rosa, did Rosa leave as well? Oh. Good, good evening, everyone. My name is Rosa Saavedra, and I'm here today for two reasons. One is to thank the district as well as the Year Hall School for kind, kindly allow us the Watsonville Preschool to open its doors in the Year Hall campus. I am a parent of a second grade student in the Watsonville Prep, and I'm very happy to hear my daughter say, my daughter say how much she loves the school. And of course, I know it couldn't be possible without your generosity of the district and the year hall. So thank you so much for that. The second reason I'm here today is to ask for the opportunity for the Watsonville Press School to continue in the year hall campus for another year. Thank you so much. Please take our petition in consideration and thank you in advance. Any discussion from the board? Seeing none, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve to authorize the district to bargain for the Prop 39. I'll second. Okay. Um, now that I have a second, uh, I will call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Next up, item 8.2, approved memorandum of understanding between PVUSD and CUSMB to provide service learning opportunities. Report will be presented by Dr. Chun Kalini. Thank you, President Dodge, uh, Board Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. I will defer the explanation of this memorandum of understanding with CSUMB to Allison uh, Nizawa, our Director of Certificated Personnel. Sorry, handling some business back there. Good evening, uh, President Dodge, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. Um, the MOU that's in front of you is to um, is from CSUMB, and it's to um, extend or continue to have um, service learning for nurses that are coming out of CSUMB. So I know you've seen a lot of MOUs and a lot of different ones that kind of come up throughout the years um, when they are 
um, expiring. And so this is one, I know it's in the middle of the school year, but it just so happens that's when the time for it to be renewed. Um, it's for five years, and like I said, we have them for student teaching and all the different ones you've seen, but this one actually is specific for service learning, like nurses, psychologists, and such. So. Any public speakers to this item? Um, any discussion from the board? Can I have a mo oh, sorry. You have a question? Yes. Okay. So is this for <coughs> our high school students or adult education? Uh, adult, it's for students of CSU and B, yeah. Okay, making sure. Yes. Um, and so the students will be supported through this program by CS. UMB. Yeah, they're in the program for CSUMB, so similar, I'm going to use like myself as an example, like in my undergrad program for physical education, I actually went out into it. Part of my program was to go out into elementary schools and practice teaching, writing lesson plans and doing that kind of stuff. So this is similar. They are students in the teaching program or the nursing program for our school um, at CSUMB. Okay. Just want to make sure they're having full support from the school as well as the district. Thank you. Yeah. Trustee DeSerpa. Allison. <clears throat> so will they be mentored or precepted by um, nurses in on the like, on our campuses? So like similar yeah. to yeah, so similar to like when we have student teachers in in any of our K twelve, we work with the site admin or whatnot to see if there's cooperating teachers that want to take them on and and kind of mentor them and and as they're doing their service learning. So it's a similar process, as how, I understand. How it. many um, teach oh, teachers? How many nurses do we have now on? In the district? Staff, yeah. We have 10 positions. We have 10. Okay. And how many students will we be taking potentially? I don't have the number. This is more okay. just the MOU to put in place. I, I think we might ha be getting one or two. I, I didn't really ask for the numbers of okay. who were in yeah. the program. All right. Thanks. I think it's a great idea. Any more discussion? Okay. Now, can I have a motion? Move approval. Second. Second. Um, I'll now call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, President or, Trustee Judge, I'm going to abstain on this vote. Thank oh, you. Okay. Um, 601, right? 511. Five, one. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. All right. Thank you very much. Next up, item 8.3, revised class description, Director of Fiscal Services. Uh, thank you, President Dodge. Board Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez, I'm going to defer the explanation of this class description to Pam Shanks, Director of Classified Personnel. Good evening. Um, the item you have before you this evening um, is due to an upcoming vacancy of our current Director of Finance position. Um, when we have a position vacant, we take the opportunity to review the current class description in order to make any necessary revisions to better reflect the current and future needs of the department. Uh, to align with the current job market, a change in job title was requested, along with some minor clarifications in the job duties uh, to more accu accurately reflect the work that will be expected of this position. Um, the job class will remain on the same pay range on the classified management salary schedule, um, and also the personnel commission approved the recommended changes at their January 30th meeting. So this evening I'm requesting uh, for the board to approve the revised uh, Director of Fiscal Services uh, class description. Um, I do not see any public speaking cards. Is there anybody here that wanted to speak to this agenda item? Okay. Um, any discussion from the board? All right. Um, can I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Can I get a second? Second. Right. Um, I will now call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, right. Five zero one. Okay, so uh, uh, item 8.4, 2019-2020 Monterey County Office of Education Early Learning Program. Uh, this report will pre be presented by Casey. Casey, clap it by. And I'm going to defer this one to um, Director of Special Services, Heather Gorman. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. I heard you were sick. <laughs> I know. Sorry. I came. Um, so good evening, President Dodge, Board of Directors, Dr. Rodriguez. Um, this MOU with the Co Monterey County Office of Education or Early Learning Program and Special Services is to support preschool students who have IEPs or who may be in need of, ass of assessments. 
For special education, our team at Duncan Holbert consults with and supports MCOE while they also support our staff and they refer students to us at Duncan Holbert. This has been an ongoing MOU for the last three years, as long as I've been here, and I think it's been going on longer than that. And um, I would recommend that we continue this collaboration with MCOE and um, agree to the MOU. Thank you. Any public speakers to this item? Um, any discussion from the board? Okay, seeing none, can I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. All right, thank you. All right, I'll now call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next up, item 9.1, 2019-2020 Youth Troop Survey results. Report will be presented by Dr. Michelle Rodriguez. Yes, thank you very much. So um, starting um, now two years ago, we began having using the Youth Truth Survey. So as everyone knows, we do have the Healthy Kids Survey. The challenge with the Healthy Kids Survey is that it's only three of our grades, and it's not yearly, um, as well as it doesn't have the parent component nor the teacher component that we use. Um, and so because of that, we went ahead and um, started the Youth Truth Survey. Um, I'm really proud of the change, specifically in the area of parents and guardians. Um, students remain fairly the same, so we have every student third grade through 12th grade um, does um, the survey. Um, this year, we went up from 926. So last year, we had a really sad number of 926, the majority coming from the North Zone. What we knew was that... Um, having it only electronically was a huge issue. Um, and so we really pushed Youth Truth Survey and we were the first district to ever do their paper, their paper pencil version um, to try to facilitate it at staff at the site level. What we did is we had the site send us all of those papers and then we paid um, a temp um, person to come in and hand enter all of those um, all those items and so we were able to raise it from 926 to 3458 um, and what that allowed the reason why that was so important is because most sites last year did not even have 15 parents that did the survey so they couldn't even have a, a result or report from their parents and now almost every single if I think every single except for um, possibly one because it's so small had um, was able to get those 15 parents um, and then staff numbers stayed about the same what you'll see is um, you'll see the topics so there's several topics and those are the ones that are colored across that are consistent across um, student family and staff um, what we did, and I don't expect you to be able to read that. Don't worry, I have it in other slides. But we did this one pager for everybody to be able to see it, and here they are. So what we did and what I've been saying really since I got here is definitely what we put our minds to, we can improve and do well at. Um, and so what we did is we selected five different areas that um, were the lowest according to national norms. And so these are the ones that you see. And so what we did is we established um, st um, action steps along with each one of these. So in terms of the elementary um, schools and the families, um, communication and feedback was the lowest category last year. Um, what you'll see is that there was a significant increase, especially in the I receive information about what my child should learn and be able to do. I will say that um, Trustee Orozco had asked us to send out the MAP scores and the corresponding what that meant. Um, we did that district-wide. We also started um, student-led conferences, so all of that I think really helped to boast um, that number. Um, and then also parents um, felt that there was a slight increase of parents um, feeling that they're receiving regular feedback on their child's progress. Um, and so um, we're proud of that work. At the secondary level um, in the family, with the families, they rated culture as the lowest. Um, and so um, you'll see, um, especially in the area of my, run, my school runs smoothly, there actually was a 17 point increase. So that's, that's 
a pretty large increase. Um, and then my school's policies are administered fairly and consistently. Um, there was a 10 point growth. Um, and so we have already, we've, in, we will be doing this again next year. And so we'll be able to see, are we continually um, making progress on that? Um, in terms of staff, um, elementary and middle school staff, um, it was looking at a meaningful professional development. Um, and so when you look at it, you see an increase at the middle school level um, by um, 18 points. Um, high school did go down. However, if you go down from there, what is interesting is that although they said it was um, not meaningful, they, they increased um, by seven points of saying that it was closely connected to their school's priorities. So I thought that that was um, an interesting dichotomy there. Um, and then elementary school staff um, had a large increase of saying that their professional development was um, linked to their um, school priorities. Um, they had um, over a 30 point growth, um, which is a, a large growth and something that we, we want to, um, to look at. So then we looked at students. So this is students and students feeling um, that they're part of the school community and belonging. Um, the positive part, so towards the, the right-hand side, is where we want to grow. Um, and so that the yellow piece on the on the right hand side is the strongly agree. So um, we were glad that that increased. So we had 3% more students that said that they strongly agree that they feel part of the school. Um, the green um, went down by one, probably one of those percent went off to the other side. Um, because the blue, which is fairly neutral, they don't have um, really feelings one or the other. Where we need to continue to focus on um, is the 6% that's at the very end of the spectrum and even the 11%, right? Um, but really the 6% that feel that they are not connected um, in any way. I do want to say looking at the an additional survey that was given, um, we do know countywide that our LGBTQ um, students are about a 30 percentile difference in almost all of the factors. So between uh, me considering suicide to me feeling connected, um, there's a large discrepancy throughout the entire county. Um, and I'm not saying that that's only in the 6%, but I do. that is a, a subgroup that we do need to help support. Um, I'm going to be doing a roundtable um, um, in a couple of weeks with a group of students um, to kind of dive into that um, a little bit more. But um, we still do have 17% of our students that we need to focus on. This, of course, is... Um, is anonymous, so we don't know who those 17% of the students are, um, but um, we do need to um, help focus on that. This is something that I thought was um, interesting um, and something that I, I do think that we need to figure out. So um, academic rigor um, or expectations, so what was interesting was that families had a 6% increase of saying, yeah, we're, you're asking our students to do, you are expecting more of our children. Um, staff, too, had a 5% increase, both which are fairly large. But when you ask students, they said, no, you're actually asking less of us. Um, the questions, which I know are hard to read, but they're down there, but the basic questions are things like, does my teacher require me to keep working even when it's hard? Do I have to work hard to get an A in the class? Those are the type of questions. So they're not asking questions like, um, what is, you know, does your, does your classroom have rigor? I think that that's important because what our students are telling us is, I can actually do more than you're expecting of me by quite a bit. 65%, that means you have... 40, you know, 35% of your students are saying that you can ask more, so, so do it. Um, and so that is something that we will continue to work on. Each principal, and this is how this was developed right here, 
So all these charts that you see, this is a new feature of, um, of Youth Truth. So all of these charts actually came through Youth Truth and they have now a way of doing this graphic. So Alicia Jimenez took that program and, and generated this for us and we all the sites were able to do the exact thing, same thing with their actual results. So each principal, we had a training with the principals again and then each principal was asked to um, go over that data, their individual data with their school sites, their school site council, and their parents. Um, and so we look forward to continuing to hear the voice of our parents and, um, and staff and students and making PVUSD a better place to be. So thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any public speakers? Any questions or comments from the board? I have some. Trustee Roscoe. Thank you. Um, so I noticed there was a dip in the rating for professional development for teachers at the high school level, and I'm wondering if there's been some conversation about uh, what happened there. So it, it was a dip of 0 .02, so it's fairly limited. I'll say of all the professional development that we're doing, that's probably where we're doing the least professional development right now because we're going up the system. So we've done a lot of professional development at elementary level. This year with the low performing block grant, we started doing a lot of professional development with that. I think um, this was done in October, right? So it was fairly early in the year. I think um, now, um, and you'll hear about it in a minute, so I have tried to get done, um, but you'll hear that we're doing a lot of work now with science, and so I think you'll, you'll hear the work that we're doing with, um, with science. And of course, the work that we're doing with CT, which we spoke about at the last um, board meeting. Um, I'm not too worried about it just because it's a slight dip. I'm, I would say those numbers are not good, but I think it's also indicative of where our focus has been. So our focus has been at the elementary level, trying to get um, our students um, achieving at a higher level, and now we've, patched, we've passed up to the middle school level. Um, I wouldn't say we've necessarily done as much at the high school level as we will eventually, but we just have to get there. Okay. And the other question I have, it's, um, well, maybe a comment for uh, the higher expectations later into lower expectations on students. Mm -hmm. um, at least the, the conversations I've had and with some parents and some students, even my nieces and nephews are a part of the district, is, is what they say is, I feel like we're reviewing. I feel like we've spent a significant amount of time at the beginning of every year reviewing something that I've already learned. Um, and so maybe it has to do a lot with that, you know? And, and maybe for students who, I'm gonna quote, I'm feeling bored during classroom time, maybe for those students, there should be an option of, um, some sort of that I can for the life of me <laughs> say this word the differentiation thank you yes um, um, an option that's accessible to parents to advocate for their students so um, so maybe having that be more accessible and available um, would be a good way to maybe bring those students who maybe are can give more, uh, performing better. Um, and then, what else did I have here? And, and the last thing I think is just nice to see that there's, uh, we've seen a huge improvement in the sense of belonging from students. I think that's uh, amazing. And I think it has a lot to do with the work that we're doing, but also, you know, um, staff too, who, or our schools from the janitor to the office manager to the teacher in the classroom. Thank you. Trustee Shock. Um, I just wanted to ask, do you think that if we have done this 
survey a little bit later that some of these results might have changed, um, such as the student engagement portion, speaking to Maria's point of that students beginning of the year do tend to go review because of the summer break and summer decline. There's students that need that review to get up to par. So do you think if we had done this survey later, we might have gotten some different results? Well, it's, it's definitely possible. So we, um, we did the survey, although it says October, it actually was later last year. The reason why we did it when we did it this year is because we tried to take advantage of the back to school nights. So we were trying to figure out a way of when we have a lot of parents captive, right. like how do we do that? Um, so we had a six week window. Okay. Um, but we have heard that we're not necessarily averse to changing the the timeline. I think it each timeline has a challenge. So if you do it in December, you have a pretty large group that are starting to go off, um, and um, and so I think we what we did this last year is we just did a huge window. Um, but we tried to do it during back to school night. Um, it's kind of one of those where each way it has its benefits and challenges of, of doing different, but we have heard that. Um, and we haven't established the timeline for next year yet. Um, I just don't want to lose um, the participation because most of the parents did the paper and pencil during um, back to school night this year. That's when we got most of them. So No, I think it's important to keep the paper and pencil option available because that did improve that. And as far as belonging, peer and support, um, yes, I like that there's growth. But I think in order to continue growth in that area, we have to make sure that there are classes um, that students feel supported in and feel they have a belonging in and that are engaging to them. And mm -hmm. that brings to the point, we had a lot of people talking about bike tech, and I think that's something that needs to be re-looked at um, when students have that strong of feeling about something, they're trying to tell us something. Um, so I think we need to heed some voices here and find out um, at our high schools if students' interests are being met. And I know we've got some new things coming and that they're going to be excited about with the new CTE pathways um, coming forward. But I think it's important that we also keep some kind of hands-on trades in the schools. So that's it. Thank you. Can I piggyback on that really quick, if I may? Because um, she, she brought up a good point. I know that we're pushing to have our CTA pathways online at each high school. But maybe if it's not a class, per se, that we can offer uh, to sustain this program, maybe it could be something after school or a club during lunchtime where they're able to, we're able to still keep that collaboration, but maybe not in the classroom setting if that's really not an option at this point. Middle ground. Thank you. Okay. I actually have a comment, uh, kind of piggybacking on that, Maria. I a thought about that. I understand the, the desire to want to align the CTEs across all of our um, contemporary high schools, but there are also some individual differences that, you know, deserve to be recognized at certain areas. I mean, you know, we know and we can't deny that there are definitely different demographics. Um, between Aptos High and Watsonville High and PV High. So, you know, maybe that, because Bike Tech, is a, it, it is fulfilling some need at PV High, and if it's not necessarily something for Aptos High or Watsonville High, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have its place at PV High. As a regularly structured class, I don't, based on the response we got tonight, I do not think that these stakeholders would be satisfied with us putting it to simply maybe a lunch program or an after school program. So, you know, just just some thought for that going forward. That that there can there could be some alignment, and some things can also be different. So, um, we have to be careful because this is an agendized item. But I do want to clarify one thing: we actually are not aligning the that and having the exact same course at all three high schools. So we're doing the opposite. 
So we're doing signature programs. The key is, is that each program has to result in an actual CTE pathway because that is what now high schools are being um, evaluated on. So if, if it's a singleton course, a one course course, that does not lead to an industry, that's what we're looking at. We're actually not, we're not doing the everybody has to have the same thing. It's actually the opposite. We're doing signature programs that are different at, at the high schools so that we can provide transportation, which we have started to provide at the beginning of this semester. So we can agendize it, but um, we I just wanted to clarify that point so that people didn't think that that's what we were doing because we're, we're doing the opposite of that. that I, I'd like to put in a request, and I think Shocker was, Trustee Shocker was leaning this way, that um, we asked the agenda setting committee to get that on a future agenda, a soon upcoming agenda, so we could get more clarification for the community and all of our stakeholders on that. Thank you. A lot of five minute discussion. But well said, Trustee Acosta. Um, agenda item 9.2, update on PVUSD science instruction. Report will be presented by Lisa McGee, Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction. Good evening, Board President, Board Trustees, and Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to do an update on the happenings of the science instruction within PBUSD. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, just showing a little bit of, of data. Um, if you look, um, the data shows the CAF scores for uh, science, math, and ELA. This is for fifth grade. Um, we've put a lot of our efforts and um, our focus on the reading at the lower grade levels, and that is reflected within the scores. Um, so e our, with the tests, our students do best on the ELA, and then science, and then math. Um, this year with math, we are uh, focusing with the MAP Accelerator, and then you'll hear about the science endeavors. For eighth grade, if you look, it's a very similar trend well, where we do our students do the best in English language arts, and then science, and then math. And then with that, I'm going to hand it over to our coordinator of science, Michael Russo, who is going to go through and give you an update on what's happening within our district. Hi, good evening, Board President Dodge, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity to share a little bit about some of the science initiatives in the district that are addressing some of the test score data that you saw. I'm going to uh, break my short 10-minute talk up into three different sections, just talking about the grade bands and what we're doing, the initiatives in elementary, middle, and then high school. Start off here with elementary uh, science and what's happening. Um, start off just by talking about curriculum and uh, what are they using the adoptions, and you can see that their adoption is, is dated. As a result, uh, we are using Mystery Science, which is NGSS aligned as a supplemental transitional uh, materials for those elementary science teachers. And we also have FOSS kits, which allow teachers to utilize hands-on activities with their students. Uh, we are up for an adoption for elementary science in two years. And the timing of that is uh, scheduled so that it doesn't interfere with the ELA adoption that's happening in approximately 50% of the schools this year. It's called Benchmark. And next year, it's going to be in the rest of the elementary schools. So we didn't want it to overlap with that. And so that's why we have a 2021-22 uh, adoption timeline for elementary science. Uh, we are delivering some professional development uh, for the uh, science release teachers. There's nine of them across the district. And I meet with them monthly uh, for a two-hour period. And our focus is on promoting student discussion, which supports uh, English language learners as well as all students, and really is necessary in order for students to uh, 
to be successful with the science and engineering practices that the new NGSS curriculum talks about. Uh, the other thing is seven out of our nine science release teachers at the elementary uh, have taken part in a county office of education three-day uh, PD on scientific and environmental literacy and we were just informed that they're going to have an opportunity to deepen their learning this June uh, if they choose to take advantage of that and we will promote that for them. Continuing with elementary science, just so want to say that us Beyond the classroom or including the classroom and beyond is this ex experiential learning, which is so important for students uh, as for, through science fairs, invention conventions, and science nights. I've had the uh, opportunity to be invited to all of these and try to attend those that don't conflict with my schedule. And it's been a real uh, a pleasure to go out and meet the community, uh, the teachers, the students, the families, the, the school site administrators, all at the same time. So you can see some numbers up there. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about science fairs in a minute as well. We are also uh, really fortunate to have a lot of environmental partners that are working in the elementary schools. Those are probably not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, one of the things that we are, one of the goals that we have is to kind of put together a database of exactly which partners are working at which sites just to ensure equitable access so that all sites are being served, so that all students at all grade levels are being served. So that's one of our goals this year is to gather that information and look at it uh, from that equity lens. All right, some of our big wins, and this first one, I really didn't have anything to do with that, so I'm not here claiming like that's a big win for me personally, but for the district, this is uh, the Culinary Garden and Teaching Kitchen, and I can't pronounce the name of the foundation. I'd probably screw it up. Legacy? Emerald. Yeah, Emerald Legacy Foundation, and that's at Starlight, and that's a, that's a five-year um, funded project that's going to connect the community garden at the school uh, with a teaching kitchen and really connect our agricultural community in Watsonville uh, with the school and home. So that's powerful. We also, uh, when I met with the science release teachers, one of the first things they said is that they're struggling to come up with funding to buy science materials to do labs. and. Uh, so through the district, we acquired $750 funding per science teacher this year so to make sure they have the hardware and the materials so they can do uh, hands-on labs with their students. Next steps, I talked about the partnership database. Uh, one of the things that we have a, also have a new county Office of Education Science co Coordinator, Jen McRae and I've been working closely with her. I know she's interested in looking at science fairs and participation in it, and specifically for students at PVUSD, and she's gonna to put together a committee to kind of take a look at it and see how we can increase participation and support of students through community partners. So I'm looking forward to doing that and also working with our science leads at each site and bringing them together and learn from each other about what's working, what are some challenges they're facing and how we can address those. So those are just some of our next steps in science at the elementary level. All right, moving on to middle school. I was last here uh, before you on January 22nd to recommend uh, the teacher's recommendation for Amplify. By the way, the, all the teachers I run into uh, since that meeting, you know, I said, yes, it was approved by the board. Yes, we're moving forward, getting our PD together and materials. And they, you can't believe how excited they are unanimously across the board about having Amplify to use in the fall with their students. Um, I just wanted to share, I didn't have time on the 22nd. I'm probably running out of time now, but I'll talk faster. Uh, I didn't have time to share on the 22nd a little bit more about Amplify and how it serves the needs of our students, specifically our English learners. So they have what they call a do, talk, read, write, visualize approach to integrating literacy into science, which is powerful and aligns right with NGSS. And uh, they have found substantial gains. You'll see this, uh, by the way, the uh, Amplify do, read, write, talk approach is in green 
and then whatever else the status quo approach is in blue, and you could see the gains for English language learners. So all students really excel with that program, and especially uh, our EL students. Um, I did mention on January 22nd that I did interview students while we were doing the pilot, and I didn't have time to share, but here are some of those student responses about what they liked about Amplify. And this might be the most exciting slide of the night. It is for me personally. And maybe you have a favorite comment up there that from students. I know which one mine is. Uh, but I'll just say, as you're reading them, that uh, you know we talk about this, this fen using phenomena or mystery science, right, with the younger kids. They talk about mystery, right, answering a question about science and then using that to engage students. Uh, it's more than that because it engages them and it keeps them, as you see their comments indicate, it tricks me into learning because I don't want to give up finding out the answer. So when we're asking them to think critically, when they're asking them to problem solve, when we're asking them to have some perseverance, they're not giving up because of that, that hook, that gap. That, uh, that phenomena that it's used to teach, that inquiry-based approach. And those uh, comments really reflect the power of Amplify's NGSs. Oh my gosh. Okay, is that my two minute warning or is that my time up? Are you serious? I'm so serious. Okay, um, so I'm from New York. I can talk even quicker. Uh, so that's our next steps, publisher trainings, material distribution, and then uh, I'm gonna talk in a minute, just less than a minute, about our support of that. Let me go to high school. Most of the work we're doing is in high school uh, this year since I've started about five months ago. Uh, we are rolling out a three course model in high school and that means that we are integrating earth and space science into uh, biology, chemistry, and physics instead of having separate earth and space science course. We are also starting biology in ninth grade where typically it was a sophomore course that has led to a big influx of sections in biology and next year for chemistry. Uh, to support teachers with that, we are doing some course mapping. I'll show you an example of that. I am meeting, uh, I've met at least twice district-wide with biology teachers, then chemistry teachers and physics teachers to do this mapping. We are adopting, we have an adoption timeline, biology this year, chem next year, physics two years out. In fact, I just met with the biology teachers this year and we just selected our two texts that we have decided to pilot. Next year, chemistry is gonna get the big, the balloon, uh, whatever you wanna call it, from ninth grade because uh, of our increase in sections, they're gonna move on to chemistry next year. So we pull together department chairs, principals, teacher leaders, um, and we are working throughout the, uh, the district, human resources, operations and maintenance, educational services, and the cabinet to explore how we can support the school sites with chemistry. Thank you. I will finish, I will wrap up. That's just a timeline of the implementation at the high school level, uh, the rollout, the course mapping, and the science adoption timeline. This is an example of the biology course map, and I think there's a pointer there. Uh, it doesn't work on that uh, data. Okay, we won't, I won't try that pointer. Uh, you see we are embedding ELD standards in there and the earth and the ESS is Earth and Space Science Standards, and that's what I wanted to show you there. So that's the work we're doing with those teams. I'm gonna wrap up right here. Those are some of our next steps. Most of them I talked to uh, already, but here's what I wanna close with. Here's our, our vision, what we'd like to accomplish with NGSS being the vehicle to do that. Our mission about how we hope to go about that. We know from the data that Lisa opened with that we're not there yet. Uh, I really see my role as having that mission and that vision become a reality and supporting that uh, highly effective, supporting teachers with highly effective uh, instruction across 
all sites throughout the district on a regular basis. That's a pretty big challenge. The way we hope to do it are through the initiatives I talked about here tonight. And we know that also these three elements here, that we have to have an aligned system of ongoing support that includes professional development, instructional coaching, and most importantly, teacher collaboration because there's only one science coordinator and one coach, science coach. So we have to build the capacity of teachers to support each other. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any public speakers to this item? Any questions or comment from the board? Seeing none. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Hi. Hi. Thank you for this great presentation. Um, I do have a couple of questions. So we have um, how many elementary schools? 15? 16. And we only have nine science fairs. That's why we want to supersize them. That's the whole Yeah, I think all for, kids, I mean, even yeah. though I just have to say science fair for me and my household was the most stressful time of the entire year, getting the science projects done and put together. Um, but me Maria, but you're, memorable, you're going for, into it. memorable for your students, and that's why we think yeah. it, it is so important. <laughs> Very and stressful we, for the We want to increase it. Yeah. But yes, I think it's important that all kids get the opportunity to participate in a science fair. Yeah. So I'd like to see that expanded at all schools. I agree. So my next question is, some schools have science teachers in elementary that are dedicated, pull out science teachers. Mm -hmm. I have always hoped that we could have that at every single elementary school. Where are we on that? Is that an idea that could ever happen? So currently we do still have some sites that have PE teachers instead of science teachers. Um, and so at this point, um, when there is a retirement, we encourage them to go after um, the science teachers instead. Um, and um, we just haven't really had many retirements in that area at this point. Um, and nothing against PE. It's wonderful. You know, it's important. But um, I just feel bad for kids that don't get the opportunity to have science all the way through elementary. Some kids do and some kids don't, depending on where they go to school. So it just doesn't feel equitable. So the teachers, if they don't have a science, if they don't have a science or at least teacher, they should be doing science, I think. And most teachers are, to be truthful. Most teachers are doing it. I think the benefit of having the science or at least teacher is that um, they, they are a single subject science teacher, so they should have a skill set in science that maybe a regular general ed teacher wouldn't have. Um, but um, generally, science is one of the funnest, if that's a word, um, <laughs> one of the most fun um, subject areas. So most teachers do, do teach it if they don't have, have it, especially your fifth grade, because they're, they actually are tested on it. So, um, okay, so now moving on to middle schools. Have we done anything? Do we have, we have labs in the middle schools in part, right? Or science Class classrooms, science I would classrooms. say, that are sort of set up with, to do some experiments. Have those been upgraded at all as a result of Measure L? No. And how are we doing with supplies at the middle school? Are the, so I, and I heard you say $750. Is that just for the high schools, or who is that That was for? actually for the elementary science teachers. That's the elementary, are, okay. You know, focused on teaching science. Mm -hmm. uh, I, in my contact with teachers through, you know, the adoption and the piloting process and with the PD, uh, with the high schools, I haven't really heard concerns about needing materials. I am hearing a lot of anxiety about next year and chemistry and, you know, having increased sections in that, but I haven't heard a lot about uh, just needing materials on a regular basis. Okay. From For the middle school level. You guys could yeah, check in with the middle or, schools. Yeah. Or the high school. Yeah, okay. Well, high schools for many years were, did not have supplies and, in fact, would ask, te would ask parents to contribute towards a supply fund because they didn't even have basic safety items as I know that I think recently so. is like two or three years ago. We, 
for the science for the high schools yeah and we, it was a uh, fall of 2015 we looked at the safety equipment and then oh, spring of 2016 we purchased it and then fall of 2016 we um purchased equipment sixty five thousand dollars worth for the high schools to make sure that they have the state of the art to do the ngss alliance standards that's great and is there any um there are there have been some improvements to high school science labs yes build outs each, and yeah yes um Can you talk about that a little bit um with a resolution that was approved by the board, uh, one-time monies were used for high schools to refurbish a science classroom, and it was estimated roughly that we allocated 300000 per high school, site, high school to renovate a classroom to be state-of-the-art. And is, is that work completed at this point? Um, as, of today, as of today, we've spent roughly 700000 on the three different um, high schools, the three comprehensive high schools with the rooms. The latest project completed August of 2019. And what, do you remember what that was? I don't know exactly what that was. I think it's PV maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's very exciting. I'm glad to see some progress in those areas. Um, I have a question about, like, at Aptos High, there was – regular chemistry, honors chemistry, and AP chemistry. Why do we have an honors chemistry if we have an AP? I don't understand why there's that middle rung. I think they just, I, I'm not sure they still have honors because I was talking to uh, Karen, just we had a chemistry collaboration just on Tuesday and I remember Karen saying that they uh, are not doing honors. Chem so they're anymore. dropping honors. Yes. And yes. okay. Uh -huh. Although Tristia Rosco just said she loved her honors honors chemistry class. Well, now you'd be in AP chemistry. Taking like mostly it was uh, it was a guidance class. Or it was earth science, uh, pretty okay. much in ninth grade, and that that also provided like if students went into earth science and then students went into bio, and so we're, it's called you know and GSS calls it like science for all, right? And we're trying to increase just like with the honors, right? And we're trying to increase the level and uh, meet students where they're at and support them so that they can. Okay, my final question school. is about, we are bonusing new science teachers that are coming into the district, is that correct? Science, science. so science, so science people out there who wanna teach science, we will give them a bonus if they come to our district. Fantastic, thank you. Anybody else, questions, comments? I'm um, sorry, all right, consent agenda. Consent items are routine items coming before the board. Any public speakers to the consent agenda? Are there any items the board wishes to defer? Can I have a motion? Make a motion to approve. I'll second. All right. I will now call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Um, do we have any closed session? Um, yes, I'd like to make a motion on closed session item 2.2. .2. I move to approve the certificated personnel report as presented by district administration on February 12th, 2020 with 28 and one additional action items. Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And my second motion is on closed item, closed session item 2.3. I move to approve the classified personnel report as presented by district administration on February 12th, 2020, with 20 and 12 additional action items. A second. Second. All, right. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And during closed session, as per resolution 192026, the PVUSD Governing Board of Trustees voted 601 on the reassignment and or release for certain certificated management for the following employees, 8155, 6415, 4513, and 7156. Thank you very much. Our next board meeting is scheduled for February 26. Uh, here again? Okay, here again. So see everybody in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.